Okay, we are live on a flatter day. <laughs> Very exciting. Flat thumbs, much peace and love to you all. And let's have the very traditional and very, very epic, very epic Flatter Day show. Let me just check my shits in order. <laughs> and I'll tell you. Fantastic. And I'll tell you what's been going on. Now, it has been, it has been a very epic week's truthing on Flat Earth British. I haven't been busy in all fronts. Facebook fronts, they don't like me. <laughs> they don't like me as much as YouTube don't like me. But on all fronts, full pronged attack. Okay, no need to hang around anymore because um, I'm a getting time, yo. Okay, so we're going in with the um, with the hard truths. Okay, which is the way it's going to have to be from now on. So, um, as I suspected with this, I thought I might have a bit of problems with deniers <laughs> or people angry and the trolls coming in which they did, and I knew it as well. They're like, freaking the fuck out. I said don't freak out. Anyway, all will be discussed this week. Will be Basically, this is what we do. If you don't know what happens on Flat Day Show, it's the um, roundup of the week where we let our hair down, okay? Not too formal, okay? We have a laugh because we're going to be having an hysterical laugh later on. <laughs> And we'll um, look at some insane historical narratives and tear them apart, okay? With each day that passes and each breath that we breathe, okay, the fake historical narrative falls apart, okay? And this week has been very damaging to them, okay? This week has raised a lot of eyebrows, I can tell you that much. I'm breathing down my neck. So, this vlog will be about Chicago, okay, Chicago. And we have talked about this before, but not in this context and not what I'm going to show you. Okay, so very, very interesting. Some stuff in this vlog, videos that you would never have thought you would ever seen before. I will keep it highly interesting. I will keep it a roller coaster ride of experience from beginning to end, taking your emotions on a on a ride. Okay. Be happy time. You like the uh, sound of that for a flat day night? Fucking betcha. Now this is the this is the flatter day that almost never happened. But before I get underway, okay, I'm blokes. I'm really hopeless at remembering soul days, by the way, dates and things. So massive, massive love and appreciation for all your support and everything you've done. Okay. Nobody's done more than Melich, who was Jazz Soldier, who was in chat now for a birthday. It was a day or so ago when I missed it. Silly sausage. So, sorry about that. Today's vlog is going to be epic, as I'm sure you know. We're going to have a, things in this you never thought you would have thought of. Okay, it's going to be fantastic. So, do make sure to share this out. Buckle in if you're new to Flat Earth British. Okay, like I said, this is epic amounts of not giving a fuckness on this show. Okay, so basically, I don't have to adhere to any YouTube rules or anything that anybody demands upon me in comments the way they want me to be. Or the way they think I should be or behave, which I won't because I won't behave because I'm not part of the hive. I'm not one of them. We're not one of them. Do you see? <laughs> yes, my long winded intros, apparently. I said it's by public demand. This is a essential part, this chat at the beginning to round off the thoughts of the week. And we have plenty to think about, especially the anomalous bunker booth. Apparently, it's a reverse image, but it's the only thing in the image that is reversed because everything else is the right way around. That's weird on my Brian. I can't I can't deal with that. Anyway, we'll have a look at all of that later on. So, oh, do behave, Luna. No, I've tried. Oh, I have tried. I don't try for very long. It's like split seconds, you know. <laughs> David Wyatt. Um, I know a ton about Chicago. Oh, good, David Wyatt. I was hoping we have a few people in from Chicago. There was one earlier as well. Just got back from the Windy City. The Windy City is awfully pretty, but they ain't got what we got. What? Welsh women. <laughs> they probably have, actually. Um, I am human. Good to see you, my dear. I am hat fairies as well. Good to see you. Connie in the house. Hat Spain. No rules. Rules is for fools, yo. Okay. So, yeah, um, I hope, I trust that you've all been having a good weekend and or a good week because um, it has been pretty fantastic. If you are following Flat Earth British, I'm sure you've been buzzing on a lot of this stuff, as I have myself. Um, I have been really, really busy with uh, all of the 
truth in and i remain to be as vigilant at this time because i don't think there's time to me be sitting on my laurels and just pondering like oh what next with all of this you know this information we've just found out now what we, what do we do with it what do we do with it what do we really do with it we know what we want to do with it we want to instill a new reality for everybody of freedom and then no matter their bullshit and they gotta go it's quite simple really isn't it no more being bullied and fucking poisoned hmm? and killed off all of us jetman good to see you dean's there from hawaii land yeah that'd be nice to go to hula hula and all of that wouldn't it <laughs> i got it in my dreams anyway reality quest andrea 75 uh three four three two uh the craving doritos don't eat doritos mate they're not even food they're just poo dried out and put into a triangle is what you're eating avidas good to see my brother so yeah your oh your birthday's the first of june your jelly where's that it's only in a couple of days oh i think you're definitely having a happy birthday avidas you send me epic pics my old friends and you have them for years haven't you star thoughts and everything even when you goes on holiday it's a big shout to you avidas thank you for your epic uh flat of britishness Atty. Sounds like he's really in like Athens or something, don't he? Nah, nah. Georgie Land. Not 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 the same. <laughs> anyway. Woy oi. Adam Kama and South Ontario Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Epic flat fumage to you. Dick Richards is in the house. Michelle, lovely Michelle. George is in the house. Joe Shields from Boston. Puff puff fast. Luna Jeu. That's being a set down. Hippie. Good to see you, my friend, Hippie Shake with Streezer. Um, no fucks given tonight or ever, really, for you go. You've got to laugh back at them, mate. You go completely party if you think about their bullshit, so don't even do it. It's meant to drive you party. The gaslighting everybody, the extremo. I won't even give it, like, any thought anymore. Oh, I did give it a tiny bit, like, you know, trying to sort of work out what they were up to. But, like, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory what's happened here, isn't it? You know, it's a reset, isn't it? <laughs> The jab a dee jab. Once you get them to uh, accept the jab, it's game over. And they've accepted it, a lot of them. And now they got to go and have it every month for the rest of their fucking lives. Whatever. <laughs> Woo! Some creepy fucking B movie. Don Saturn, good to see you. And my German soldier. Jazz Soldier, who is marriage, who is really Jazz Soldier. I feel like literally Jazz knows of her. Curtis, uh, Dad Jane, Bill, Bill Miller, it's like one of her favorites. Engineer Shots, uh, I have fairies, I said that. Humble Disciple, good to see you. Regina's here as well. Blue Sky, Michael is here. It's epic. He's from Chicago land. Um, so the show that you really have, Muzz, good to see you, my friend. So let um, me just show you my details for my uh, website and channel. I'm hoping to get my website back anytime soon. It's with in the hands of Cool Luke, who is uh, one of our webmasters. Anyway, so this, what a fucking time I had. So first of all, okay, a couple of few hours ago when I was getting all this vloggage ready for you all, like for epicness, I find out I got no broadband at all. I can't even bring up pages. And then when I follow my broadband lead back, I find this. Okay? Now you know who's guilty for this, don't you? Hmm? My bunny rabbit. Hmm. Who's going to go on a slow, slow simmer. If, he can, if she carries on. So, I had, like, blind panic. I'm like, holy fuck they're not going to have a flat today show what am i going to do so i don't want to go into details about where this ethernet 30 foot long ethernet cable managed to i i shit a 30 foot long ethernet cable for the flat day show so i hope you're all happy with that and then um, when i was putting up my own vlog the, i put it up on um, facebook and i put it up on um Ooh, Flat Earth News and Reports on Facebook as well, which has uh, like 30,000 followers or what have you. Um, and they demanded to put all the descriptions and links in thrice. Took me two hours. That changed me off. Anyway, buckle in. We're going to have a fantastic show. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff, uh, stuff you would never really thought you'd be thinking about tonight. <laughs> Usually the case, isn't it? Um, new ways of thinking. 
and um, an experience shared. So we will have a chat later in um, all you guys in chat. We'll have a little think about that craziness of, you know, there's some of the, I just mean, spent like the last two days in comments, guys, like five, 600 comments concerning the San Francisco anomalies. Um, this car on Market Street in the color footage, it's got the same registration plate, it's going round and round in circles. And there is just so, so much. Everybody shouting at me, saying they're not electric cable cars. They run on a cable that's on a roller underneath the street. Okay. So I asked every single one of them the simple fucking question. Is this the cable running on electric or steam or what? Um, I get the same answer back every time. Oh, I don't actually know. No, I know you don't fucking know. Shouting. People really didn't like that one. As I suspected in the first place. It's a denial thing, isn't it? Same with like when people, you know, first discover they're not on a spinning watery testicle in space. It's the same sort of thing as that. It's a nerky, nerk, nerky, <laughs> knee jerk response that they all give you. No, 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 no. Don't do that to my Brian. It can't be a constructive pass. Well, what does that mean for us all? What does that mean for our situation in this place? Hmm? They don't want these questions. I don't fucking blame them. Humble disciples and oh, I like that angel love bud. I love bud myself. <laughs> Zadza, good to see you. I believe you're watch person as well. I think Curtis. So yeah, some from Wales land. You ever heard of that? It's epic. It's like really epic. No, it's not. No, what I am anyway. Um, rabbit nearly stopped Martin's rabbit. Yeah, my bunny, my jebba, bunny, bunny jebba. Okay, you'll never stop my rabbit. Okay, only a nuke can stop me. I haven't got any. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two San Francisco's, there's something definitely going on. Nothing is the same. And the tracks and everything you'll see anyway. Just... I missed lots anyway. I did miss lots. And I'm glad everyone brought it to my attention. But all it did was solidify beyond a shadow of a doubt that this two that you know basically the color footage is indeed fake. And it looks like that older footage is from another time, which is mind-blowing. Hmm? Probably the first destruction of Chicago, which was in the mid-1800s. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, <coughs> I'm going to start sharing screen. I'm going to have a think about... I meant San Francisco. We're going to have a think about Chicago, okay, which has been wiped off the face of the earth. It's been moved. It's been exposition, the best on earth, which lasted... This great, the giant civilization you've ever seen, um, which was the most influential of all um, the world's expositions, uh, world's fairs, lasted less than a year. But yeah, 27 million people apparently go through there. But more to the point is the insane narrative for like, you know, you can get this same narrative, you can do the same experiment yourself, you can choose anywhere, Philadelphia or Europe, London. And you'll see exactly the same population growth for the and the same rate. Okay. So it starts off quite slow, early 1800s, and then it gets insanely exponential. We mean jumps of like 250% in population, guys. They give you narratives of, oh, they were forced from one place or another, migration, what have you. But no, guys, we, we know these are fucking an influx when everyone's been wiped out in a reset. The arrivals. So C. Coop, good to see you there. Uh, made it to class. Phew! Anyway, yes, I know. Classical education. As Adjur, good to see you, my friend. Thanks for all them awesome shares on Facebook, brother. That keeps me well you know, interested. I like to keep complicated. I do. I like to keep complicated. You're addicted to my channel. I hear that a lot. Key finder. Kim, who's bad. <laughs> the bad. Sounds Welsh, doesn't it? That's like a Welsh poet, isn't it? The bard. Crown in the bard. Um, Burdick was my brother. I hope you never got in any trouble today, even if that happened in London. I was supposed to have gone. I had a telephone call this morning. Go to London, go to London. I'm like, no, I can't. I can't. It's flat a day. I got stuff on. I got to get my shit together. Boy, Nitch, good to see you, my brother. Boy, Nitch is here as well, Robbie. And any lurkers, right? Not allowed. That is the rule. One of you, only one. <laughs> okay. You've got to join in with the crowd, okay? They're the most friendliest people you can ever imagine, okay? Come and share the love and do not be shy. You know, you're Martin now. Yeah, I'll look out for you. Okay, I'll look after you. 
We got your back. Don't be alone. Okay. Okay. Right, I'm going to get stuck into juice. Now, we're going to have a think about first something that's been bugging me all along in this uh, journey of alternative history is the giant jump in population in the 1800s. But check this out for Chicago. It's the most insane. I'm going to run you through a quick narrative. But I'm going to need to try and get my brain together because it's got splattered in the last few hours. Bunny wrecked my head. <laughs> I never got my hair off with her or anything. She's a cute, adorable bunny. She just looked at me very guiltily and went, but I know, but I'm a rabbit. So I'm like, yeah, I get that. I get that. All right. Sorted. Yeah, I know. Hey, on we go. And I managed to shit a uh, 30 foot Ethernet cable. Don't even ask. <laughs> anyway. So. Dun, dun, dun. Flight of British is... Flat day night in. So, yeah, check this out, right? So, this is the build up of population for the city of Chicago. And um, I can take you further back. Well, let's just go from 1840, but I'll take you further back. In 1833, the town first organized and had the population of 200 guys. Within five years, in around 1835, the population was 6,000. Okay, so that's prior to this. And then we go from 1840, and we have a population of 4,470, okay? In that 10-year jump, in that 10-year jump, it rises 570%. It's near just under 30,000. Anybody? The official narrative, they, they blame it on um, the, they all came out of the Quebec area of Canada, forced out on some migrations because of some policies, blah, blah, blah. Guys, not this influx of humanity for every single city in Christendom. Have a think about it. It's fucking astronomical. Where did they all come from? They had to be, if they were all traveling and migrating, they must have been leaving their own countries completely fucking empty. 1860, 112,000, a, a rise of 207. 74 percent this is insane again this same period this massive exponential burst of humanity 1870 we're going up to 298,000. that's a rise of a hundred it peters out when you get up to the 1900 mark i've noticed the same exact same growth pattern for london and any city you look at guys just look at it and it's all exactly the same spooky so you get up to 1880 and we're up to half a million. It's a rise of 60, 68%. 1890, when all of this Columbia exposition is going down, there's a million people, a million 99,000. It's a big rise of population again. And then by 1900, guys, there's 1,698,000 people in the city of Chicago in the jump of 60 years or from 1833 from 200 people the city halfway through this period here by the way well, this is what gets me so there's been um, a, a fire early on and there's been the 1871 fire the bestigo event etc okay and there's uh 300,000 yeah the population in the next three years it, it explodes another 68 percent when there was 150,000 people made homeless. Okay. Oh, well, how did that exactly happen? That's a bit of a miracle in itself. We can see a lot of miracles with this narrative. Anyway. Cool. So um, I don't want to talk too much about the, uh, you know, the demographics of Chicago, but that's just to give you an idea of the ex ex extreme growth of humanity in this period to me we know what's going on but i mean it's there in the official narrative so i'll give you a taste of old world chicago now considering this thing was a village in 1835 and you get up to these are really early shots here some of these and this city is already deep now one thing i i really noticed with some of these pictures guys is they really do look like the submerged buildings it's like that instantly i looked at it i was like well it's like where's the rest <laughs> it's all down here and the streets are just mud and that doesn't fit with the architecture which is sublime and up here what's all this a decommissioned technasmia sorry that's a later footage but this uh greco you know basically the classical world 
I seen the 1920s, I laid the uh, feeding pigeons, but I stood a nice shot. And look at these. See these? You see these everywhere in Britain as well. These giant uh, arches, these huge red brick things everywhere. And these as well, you know, these, some of these skyscrapers, I really do think are from that era also. I really do. Some of them are so anomalous, like the building of the, you know, the Woolworths building and the Singer building. What's with Singer anyway? There's something going on with all of that, isn't there? So that looks like uh, MI6 or something. So, yeah, it had a giant fire, okay, and it was the Pistigo event. So you had the giant fire to the... To the east which was a forest that went up the ashes fell on the azores it was that big um, but also paris on the other side of the atlantic is also destroyed and reset exactly the same period and they say it's the franco prussian war i'm saying that there was an event a big event look at this thing it looks like half of it is missing but wow what a, what a slab what's outside Looks like it's uh, being textured, the picture. It's hiding what's outside. It doesn't look. It looks cartoon. And look at this sort of uh, architecture. The old world of Chicago. So many secrets. Looks quite oriental, doesn't it, that one? So what's that there? The Brando's Art Temple. Hmm. Interesting. What's this? Nonotuck. Nonotuck. Dentist. Oh, no, fair enough. Oh, it's a nice little picture, that one. Um, and then um, these, of course. Now, somebody said something very, very interesting in comments. I thought, yeah, wow. You know the picture we I show you of everyone arriving from the terminus and just in flocks, people walking into San Francisco, you know, that eerie, haunting picture of what the hell is going on. Well, somebody suggested in comments, what if these giant institutions that are poor all out in the middle of nowhere were actually built for people who didn't want to go along with the reset? They worked it out and knew. Pro I protesteth. Where do they go? Hardly anyone in them institutions. You just have, you know, orphan asylums. What? So if you haven't got parents, you're insane. So here's uh, the beach and the waterfront on Chicago, on the on the lake, which was just full of a fun fair at one stage. Massive, massive fun fair all along here. Um, also, they had um, a main freeway or a freeway, famous one, which stripped along here. And they got uh, Chicago was a main railway hub as well. You know, huge railway hub. Look at the size of these things. That looks like half of it's missing to me as well. Again, not trams, but look at this. And look at this, you know, the size of the, um, they always, you know, they, what you find, you get the strongest stuff on the bottom. So you get these big fat masonry blocks, which are just really, really big guys. And then they just ever decrease in size of stone up to like a red brick top from, from here onwards goes maybe um, a bit of stone in there as well, but like smaller. Than that. So the bottom can withstand any any waves or any inundation, I reckon. So this is um, part of the early exposition. This is one of the best, they say, the most influential. So this is what we want to get our heads around now, guys, right? Is they say that they built out of, you know, they brag how brilliant they all were out of the complete and utter desolation, the entire city gone. And they build all of the city back, which I'll show you. So ancient Italian buildings just miraculously appear back after the city's been incinerated. All of it. All of it. And then they built an exposition like nine years later. Does that make sense? Nine years later. And it's this. So they're saying, oh, well, you haven't got to look very far below the surface to see that it's all like, you know, basically, you know, Disney World. It's, it's all like uh, Plaster Paris and, you know, Look at that old ladder lean there, guys, on the seven as well. Ho, ho, ho. What does that mean? We got a seven, an angel, and a ladder lean. You know, these shots are never by accident. So look at these two little Antiquitec uh, domes on either side of that. So, yeah, they built this um, beautiful civilization, but it absolutely fragments my mind to see how long it actually run. Yeah, it's like... 
the population of Chicago is this. This is the opening ceremony to the to the Columbia Exposition. You know, to commemorate. You know, I suppose independence of Columbia, etc. But look at the size of the architecture. And the amount of people present, you know, it's got nearly, by 1900, nearly, you know, 1,600,000 people. And you go further back in time, it's all definitely mud flood stylage. Ice cream, saloon and restaurant. Some back alleys there. A nice little shot, nevertheless. And um, this is what I can't get my head around. It's just me. Okay, is this is the level of devastation on the front of Chicago on the lake? Okay, so it's just like you know, like we see in San Francisco, only a few little churches buildings left, and then like literally on some of the evidence I'll show you now, like one year, two years later, there's an entire Italian city built, and we're ready for the great exposition, the greatest on earth. You know, the thing is destroyed. This is in the center. We're talking four square miles of city incinerated we're talking at least 150,000 people made homeless yet the population accelerates straight after because they fucking destroyed the old and brought in the new no doubt so and the, there was two chicago fires in the exposition which we'll look at a bit later one of them was supposed to start in a water tower because apparently Apparently, a water tower incinerates. No, no, I shit if you not. That's what they say. There was two. You know this? The ruins of the old waterworks, the tower, that caused all of this destruction, but that's still in place, obviously. It looks like an old... Wow, it looks like a castle with this thing on top. 18... 1871, the Great Fire. Okay. Look at the state of this, guys. Before and after. Just like San Francisco. Just like Boston. Two different worlds. And um, the newspapers at the time. Sorry, my phone's going 20 to the dozen. Chicago in ashes. Hundreds of millions of dollars worth of property destroyed. The south to the north and portion of the west the division of the city in ruins. All hotels, banks, public buildings, newspaper offices, and great businesses blocks swept away. What do they mean by swept away? Um, by fire, I guess. Uh, the conflagration still in progress, so it was still going on when that was doing. When that was out, it was a couple of days of it. Fury of the flames. I think it was a much, much bigger event. It was Prestigo, and so many other events at this period of 1871. I think there was more, more likely to be a full, you know, by same full reset i feel like saying full mini reset if that makes any sense so look at these old buildings here in uh chicago and i guess uh in an old shroppy image absolutely gorgeous but you gotta have your front door on the second story <laughs> gets me that does what's that a thing of beauty is a joy forever oh, i could agree with that and there's no place like home all right that's his house there. He's got all his little teapot and all that. But look at these houses, guys. All mud flooded here and beautiful ornate railings going up to a first story front door. Okay. And some of the old Tatarian architecture a bit later in the 1920s, looking by the cars. And you, these are like the things you get in Harlem or, you know, the, you know, to watch an episode of Kojak. And you'll see all of these in the background are Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> they're just like all of them, old world. And they're massive. They're massive. And look at this. <laughs> you know, where's the rest? Oh, Yobbo. I had a mate called Yobbo. <laughs> well, small world. That's the 1920s. And look at this. Now, is it me? Or does it look like half of that building is gone? Like that arch there, okay, should be down here. And the rest of it yeah that really really and with having the mud outside as well that looks so sunken from this perspective that looks like whoa where's the rest <laughs> really does oh ho, ho. again that again the same thing it's like where's the rest everything's a, a disproportionate top heavy and the rest is down like where's the rest it's like well, you're gonna fall over <laughs> again with them all guys and these as well it's like where's the rest don't they look these windows there are the same size as them because that's the tops of the other windows. Probably go down again. And all they do is make, um, you see these bay windows, they make it into a dome. Add a bit of a dome, a bit of stonework. Easily done. 
take, it wouldn't take them long, a few years. And look at these things. Oh, that's nicely manicured outside. That looks like a, maybe a later affair, but it looks Italian stylish. And uh, well, they had quite a futuristic car park. By the looks like the 1950s. I know Germany got one of them. Seen on James Bond film. So we're gonna get clued up. Bond. Do, 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 do. Oh no, that's the Saints. That's pretty good too. Check that out. Chicago, Chicago, and I love this view uh, from the front. We got this big grassy knowledge, and they're all chilling out, and you get just like the massive like Chicago skyline. Look at the size of these buildings for such an early period. Okay, where's the rest of that? <laughs> Do you see what I mean, guys? That looks exactly the same thing I'm getting. It's like it just ends there, and it's like, whoa, where's the rest? If you imagine the building down here then that would be proportionate on the eye and it would be like oh yeah that makes sense that don't make sense it's like yeah all right where's the rest <laughs> really isn't it even the castellations they you know they're far too low these would be a lot higher this is, should be lower it's crazy crazy good that is Ooh. and uh, the area which turned into the coliseum garden which is a castle um you find a lot of armories new york armory philly and uh, Chicago were castles, and I think they were literally like, like literally castles of the old world. And your old theaters again, where's the rest? You know, window gush, half cut. You know, you got the sill on the floor. Yeah, does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. And again, with the columns and your technized your ports, theaters were more, much more. Maybe something to do with a symphony. This is an interesting little pitch. I was wondering about the size of the fire hydrant. Now, what I'll give you a little chronology. Just stop, stop, stop there, stop there. On this picture, it's a rather nice picture. I'm guessing it's attributed to the Great Depression. But look at the size of these stones. And I just have a think. So they organized the town in 1833. In 1835, only a few years later, the population is at the 6,000. Okay, It's the world's fastest, or America's fastest growing city at this stage. But then you get to 1850s, the city's partially destroyed, and the American Civil War comes along again. There's another exponential growth of population. Then in 1856, it has the first sewers, Okay, the first credible sewers in America fitted in 1856 but then okay in 1858 a short time later part of the center of chicago was hydraulically jacked on screws and moved shortly time after it was incinerated by the way anyway after they've moved the entire city on jacks in the mud because the world is mudded by then um 1871 the entire city is consumed by flames four miles square okay and then you get to 18. 85 they're the first um skyscraper in chicago and the population is up to half a million bringing in 1893 and the greatest exposition of them all the world columbia exposition which introduced electric to america and is responsible for a new health program and the introduction of the hypodermic needle to a population now i'm wondering I'm wondering whether everyone had to have a jab when they went into this place. 27 million people in less than a year go through. I'll show you shortly. Look at that. Union Station. Oh, it was sweet with the, uh, with the light on Union Station, I've noticed. And again, look, just out on the grass. I love that shot. I was going to use it as a thumbnail, but it's not colour. If it was colour, it'd be swahy. And there it is, the... You know, it's very distinctive, uh, the Columbia Exposition, is by this dome. It's slightly, you know, it's a little bit different to all the rest. You know, the Paris Exposition, St. Louis Exposition, and um, the Pan American Exposition in San Francisco. It's, it's a bit different. It's identifiable. And here's another possession uh, ahead of, uh, you know, this great exposition. And check this out. It was the first electrified out of the mall. Um, and it was the one that sort of rolled out, I guess, um, the new technologies. You know, they covered medicine, they covered electric. I've got a list of the things. And usual thing, the Phoenicians with their shippage coming up out of the water. And you've got Colombo, Columbia on there, which I guess is something to do with 
bullshit Columbus. And the World's Fair looks a little bit plaster Paris, but I've downloaded this image. I thought it was really interesting. They had half a Zeppelin on top of a tower docked, yeah, ka -ching. Um, and like the wings um, either side. Don't you find that interesting, guys? Uh-huh. I don't know. Juicy, juicy. Showing you they're docking on towers, guys, is what I'm saying, because it's there, and they got the wings. Ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> And what you find is they're the biggest ferry, Ferris wheel going. Um, look at all that architecture. Tataria there, beautiful. Not what they call Tataria, but it is that style. Um, this Ferris wheel incinerated as all of the fairgrounds and all of them, um, as you will see, in two great fires. The size of these things. There was only 600 people there in 1835. Where did you get all your shit from to build it all? Oh, my God, look at it. Look at this thing. Fully fitted out technasmia, old world. And again, with them levels, door entrance there, entrance, you could just water fill it to there. Wow. That's just massive, isn't it? And again, where are the rest of it? It's just, yeah, it goes ever decreasing, smaller, 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 all the way up to whatever's going on up here. Big, massive, massive domage and arch. Not many people around, I noticed, for a city of such a population. Boom! And then you get to this era, and they show you these photos. Others, just not a soul around. It's really weird. Such a jump of humanity. It's like everybody just turns up, guys. Like everybody just turns up. It's like overnight. Just fucking get to the suburbs. There ain't no one about, but look at this architecture. See this sort of style everywhere, don't you? Britain or Australia. I'm guessing this might be red if it was in colour. That, that rustic red colour stone, uh, granite. I feel. So let me just move on. I've just uh, managed to lose my page. Excuse me. Where to watch you guys? So yeah, we're gonna have a little giggle later on. Okay, there'd be nothing rude. We'll get that one flat for British. And if it do, okay. And if you are easily offended, just skip that bit. Don't worry about it, all right? <laughs> now, here's uh, the front as well from um, some sort of Tatarian building age. And poof, look at that. That's practically a, practically a castle. Castellations. Wow, that's that's like a, maybe a manor house. I don't even know what it is. But holy shit, that's some, some beautiful property. That is crazy. That's, that's in Chicago, by the way. It doesn't... You know, at first somebody showed me that. I never knew nothing about this field. I'd be like going through like, oh, Hertfordshire. Oh, I don't know. I'd be going through all the English counties. I would never think of uh, Chicago. Crazy. And then it is that giant Ferris wheel. We'll have a little look up in a minute. Okay. So the exposition, highly spooky. So um, I, you could get a list of the prominent buildings that were designed and destroyed all of them. Okay, so it opens in May the 1st, May Day, 1893. It closes in October the 30th. Isn't that Halloween? 1893. It has a little earlier opening when they let a few people in, like in the, in the previous year. But it is, like, closed. They had the fire in January... Um, as well, apparently, which just completely incinerated what was left of it. Like, that ain't uh, fucking deliberate. Are there any buildings left of the Chicago World's Fair? The Museum of Science and Industry has one of the only two remaining buildings. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Sorry, my phone's going mental. So, um, that's insane that this thing is only stood for less than a year. Let's have a look at this thing that only stood for less than a year. So, like they say, 27, nearly 28 million people, okay, bought tickets and went through. They come on, like, the biggest rail network in America, and this is, like, the giant hub for, I guess, I don't know, for the, one of the biggest cities in America is in uh, that coast of America. So this, Philly, and New York, three main hubs, and this has got the main the main one so everyone can pour in off trains 
being filtered through. I'll show you something a little bit creepy a little bit later on, something that was a bit suspicious to me. So not carrying any bags, even though you're going away for the day. Wouldn't you take a little nibble with you on the train? Unless you've got, like, a buffet car. That seems a whole load of people to get off that little train, doesn't it? Hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight carriages. Really? Oh, it looks like a load of cases over there, maybe, guys. He's got a bag. He's got bags. Maybe they have got bags. He's wiping his eyes. Hmm. She's being helped. She's being helped. She's maybe old, though. Uh, somebody just watching him all the foreground. He works in a station. That's weird, isn't it? Just how many people. So there it is. Just crazy Phoenician Empire. Look, they got all the deities, the orb, scepters thing going on. And you have the same shape as you have, you know, the lake outside Washington, D.C.'s dome. And it's all the same structure. You have this, like, you know, uh, basically rectangled enclosure with all these fine buildings around, which you find in all their centers. This is a lovely little shot. But again, that kid looks like he's penciled in. But beautiful, look at it. I can't believe that he put all his attention to detail on every single thing just for, what, less, less than a year. This actually looks like it might be fine, fine, uh, you know, fine art, uh, vase, rather than just, you know, crap. Getty's images really piss me off. They always skank the best images and put Getty all across the freaking front. That would have been swahit. That would have been my thumbage. So, yeah, that gives you a taste of how epic this thing was. Do you have any doubts, the classical world? You think this is a replica? I'm really not thinking it is, guys. Look at it. I'll show you some images later. Some of this stuff is dirty and weathered. How can it be dirty and weathered if it was only open a year and it burnt down? And how can stone burn down? And see these totems with the phoenician ships ships we talked about them last week on my post you get them in st petersburg you get them in new york what's it doing there almost as if like this is an actual city that's there and they just introduce it as the exposition check out their fountain with our phoenician ship again right in your face 1893 and this is a stereoscopic image, the great Krupp building. So the German steel producers had um, armaments. They were showing you the howitzers and uh, cannon of the day, which were massive um, in there. So Krupp's had, um, you know, so no problem back then with uh, Germany, had they? America, give it like 20 years or well, actually 50 years to be fighting them. So, uh, yeah, and then you get all of this, like we see in classical artworks from the Renaissance period, with columns, with the the statues and always with the water just like venice but new no. america land look at that one. Oh, that's beautiful again looks like a lot of it's missing and these arches we've seen this quite often this picture of uh the columbia arch it's a little bit like the one you get in uh san francisco but it's more it's more and the statue's bigger but again, with the Romans, these blocks, you get like the Parthenon ceiling, some sort of tech. It's like sound tech or something. It is. So, yeah, 27 million people filtered through this place, guys. Um, not sure if that's a bandstand or what have you. Doesn't seem to be much action going on up there. Couldn't tell you what that is. Sort of air thing going on there. And the Irish village, they had Irish, Germany, it's the same thing. You know, they show you what every country is going to look like when all the arrivals come in. The usual. The Blarney Castle, where you kiss the Blarney Stone. I wonder if they had an imitation Blarney Stone where you got to kiss it upside down. <laughs> Even looks a bit like Blarney Castle. Does it say ga castle? No, it says castle. Oh. So, that's pretty good, that one. I like that. So... Excuse me, just got my internet back. There she is. Um, and inside, um, we've seen this sort of thing in Paris. It's full of fine artworks and it's full of, but basically it's stuff you can't buy. And what that is there, that device there. Hmm. Stuff you can't buy, um, but you can just look at like endless amounts of hairbrushes or endless amounts of, you know, 
cents perfumes products just insane you know just walk through for you know unfortunately none of these pictures are 27 million people are not evident there you go again this is the um western house electrical part and you got a little greco-romano temple built inside of a giant dome um with western house electric there's a giant dynamo outside that would have been fantastic to see i wonder what that giant glass thing is in there as well if you're still that was electric oh oh i wish i could see in there oh dear 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 look at this size of this place again presence of Egypt with the obelisks and the Moorish with, well, that's the Cairo one, obviously, with beautiful tower. And that's on the lakeside. All on the water. I guess you could just take a ride up, get off and walk into these buildings like you get in Venice on these boats. All of that effort to build this giant civilization, this fun fair, this Ferris wheel, Look at it in colour. There's nobody in these half these images, though. You know, it says 27 million kind of going through, guys. But honestly, none of them. There's nobody in any of these images except on that one there. It's just a couple of people. Doesn't scream 27 million, does it? Not even that. You know, I mean, you know, for if it was open only a year, how many people a day would they have to have through? Just saying. So, um, yeah, by um, January 1894, the following January, the music hall goes up as well. Another accidental fire, okay? Consumes the rest of it. They're really woho, it's terrible. And they say it's um, electrical sparks, fell upon an ice lagoon, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, they must have had a shit hot reverse engineering detective looking at that. Okay, I'm just saying. And uh, pulling up her how all of this stone masonry could go up and be left and just disappear off the face of the earth this building this building this building this water tower apparently went up in flames oh yes i have pictures and apparently incinerated all of this while it's out on the water maybe a spark jumped off it here's inside some of these this is the french bit look at this if this is not weathered I don't think that's smoke damage. I think this is like literally weathered. And this stuff looks really old to me. And he left that. That's the concert hall and the peristyle after the fire. Like nothing was ever there. Giant stone buildings. And apparently, yeah, when the electricity building went up in flames, you can just stand not far away and watch it all go. Hmm? Just like in San Francisco. With the same sort of smoke and the same sort of let's watch it all go up in flames. It's like I got a really sneaking for feeling, guys, that these people know something that we fucking don't. <laughs> Just saying, I really am getting that feeling. So this is left of the first fire. And then what happens next by January, all of that and all of that and all of that is gone off the face of the earth. This is the first fire. But no fuckery going on at all, is there? I wonder what that is. It's a funny, it's a funny looking lamppost. And um, yeah, so you can just stand there. The smoke won't. Uh, as long as the smoke don't change direction, I guess should be all right. Don't guess it's noxious fumes. Chance of dangerous explosion. Uh, I don't know. It's probably perfectly safe to watch a fire at distance. Anyway, something going on there. And that's what was left. There's the Ferris wheel over there. So, you know, you get the scale, the distance. You know, that's a fair walk away, isn't it? And as far as the eye can see, everything is completely gone. I How, pray tell, how, how does a building um, reduce to just a pile of bricks? Heat does that, does it? And that, you can see that's all that's left. Remember I showed you that picture just now with that statue with all the buildings around it? All of the buildings around it are completely gone, look. Uh, but the statue still remains. I find that really creepy. I find it really creepy. <clears throat> wow. Holy shit. So, how many of you are watching? Hi, guys. Sorry to... Um, I just got into it. 871 of you. Thank you. And all you guys on Facebook and everywhere else. Please make sure to share this out. Because um, you're going to miss, like, the funny stuff if you don't. 
spread spread the word. And then, yeah, this population, it just buff, baffles my mind. Look at the size of this building, though. Know? That's a great photograph, that is. Really atmospheric. But again, um, just summing off. <laughs> again. And this uh, tower, there's the tower there. Apparently, you can see it collapsing as well. Um, I'm sorry, but the whole of that background, look, the only thing that looks real is the front bit. And the back bit looks cartoon or something. Well, well, why is it in sort of this negative -y sort of way and looking cartoon anyway? This bit looks a little bit more realistic, but not really. And what's all this? So, yeah, the whole building, this is what's supposed to have caused the fire and burned down all of the centre of all of the exposition. Yeah. Whatever. you got fire engines there. What did they do? Sweep that car. Just saying. A smaller image. Okay. Now, let's move on. So, yeah, that's fucking really now your highest order makes no sense to man or beast. Now, funnily enough, I thought it was creepy, is uh, I got this souvenir guide to Electronic Source Chicago Exposition. There's loads of good stuff in there, but this was interesting. They introduced, and there was um, basically, I've picked up, you can find it on the Wikipedia, they'll say, oh, they introduced the health system through through the exposition, okay? Is um, injection treatments, the first recorded injections, uh, by means of instrument was made by Irish surgeon in 1844. Um, it was not until 1855, however, that Charles Breves of Lyons devised an instrument consisting of a barrel, plunger, and a uh, true car, from which later models have been evolved. Uh, the latest development is a hypodermic syringe, and here it is, and um, pushed out in this uh, said um, exposition. And, um, you know, this surprising not much in it. If this is about, like, uh, epidemics and stuff, it's definitely tied in with it. Look. Okay. So, um, hyperloid products. So, they bring in the hypodermic needle in this giant medical one that they got there. Uh, treat and, treatment for varicose veins. Uh, so, what are they using? Hyperloid quinine, uh, urethrine, and sodium morphurate. I guess that's something more fate. I don't know. Um, and then you're getting rid of... Ooh, that's quite interesting in itself. Oh, so what else are they doing? Animal substances? Whole gland. Hmm. I thought they were actually extracting uh, from the... from a gland then, or... Are they? Okay, now, <coughs> the book will be linked below. <laughs> I've got time to read all of that right now. I'm not in the middle of a vlog. But, yeah, pituitary glands to do with growth. So that's really interesting. They're doing injection stuff to do with glands. Oh, and it goes on about Scott the Antarctic as well. What's this? Uh, diphtheria, is it? Oh, no. Sorry. Uh. Chests and cases. And um, what the hell is this? Hmm. So this is the medical stuff that's being brought out in that exposition, guys. Look at it. That's just crazy stuff. Brass medicine pocket glass case. Okay. Iodine there. What was that? What was that? Uh, tabloid soloid brand products. Uh, Vaporol uh, with iodine. Vaporol, um, arif, a, aromatic uh, ammonia, uh, smelling salts. Smelling salts, um, I used to have them years ago, carry them around. They, you know, have a sniff of them. That certainly wakes you up, especially if you was, like, working. You wanted to get, like, the uh, last hour over with smelling salts. Dextrin? Fuck me. Dexy's Midnight Runners. What are they saying about them? Fuck me. Sweaters, guys. Sweaters. <laughs> 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 That's Dexin, not Dextrin. <laughs> Kepler. Oh, hemoglobin. Your blood edge. Oh. Thank you, Rat. Uh, and I guess in the, they're trying to say that this was the um, radio, radiography, uh, x rays. Rickets. There's not too much of that. I have seen one person I knew in the street uh, when I was younger had rickets, which was bandy leggage. Wow. Well, I've gone that forever, but I'll link it up. It just goes to show the crazy shit they had going down in that exposition. So um, this is a cool little link I'll give you as well and give you some idea. The immense crowds that built up at this apparent fair. 
Um, I don't know what that is. That's Christopher Columbus not. Columbus not. And if it did exist, well, you must have had serious questions when you arrive in this civilization. Check that out. That's the Hotel Cultural Entrance. Oh, wow, fantastic. Stone. See all that stone? Yeah. Fire will reduce all that stone to little tiny breakwets. Only in expositions. Um, yes, this doesn't happen anywhere else on Earth. Look at that size of it, though. Actually, looking back to electricity building. I'm just wondering how the fire managed to travel through all this. And that's the only you get crummy pictures like everybody on looking. So Columbia Avenue Manufacturers Building. Well, it's a really advanced stuff, I bet, in there. As I've always said, if I time travel, I would love to look through some of this. Oh, it's Italian engineering. Blow your mind a bit. Tesla tech, guys. Yeah. Interdimensional stuff, yo. So I'm still like, you know, like that film Prestige ends up with loads of cats and loads of hats. <laughs> David Bowie's last movie, coincidentally. No coinky dinks in this place. So, Hiawatha, statue of an Indian scout. But they didn't really look like that. They had suits and Wrangler jeans. And there it is, all electrified. Administration built in at night. Beautiful, 1893. First of its type, they say, on Earth. It's a biggie. And it's a beauty. All gone. And all of that was gone. And only that statue left, as far as the eye can see. Isn't that really unusual, guys? How all that could just happen. All of that gone. That gone. That gone. Really, really cool pictures, these, by the way. Unfortunately, they were undownloadable, but a good uh, source. Uh, well, because it's so early, it's 1870 or 1893, can't seem to get too many colored pictures. There are some out there, but as I said, like, they've been grabbed by uh, Getty. Check that out. Oh, that one's fantastic. That's the uh, McKinney Hall. So, yeah, at the end of this, or before it closes down, a mayor. Uh, gets assassinated and at another exposition as well. Uh, McKinley got shot as well. So, you know, these are another opening event, surprisingly. So, you know, they're tied in with like presidential or political people being assassinated in the openings and closings of said ceremonies. Maybe publicity stunt. God, that looks mud flooded. Considering it's supposed to be just built for one year and then it all gets built down. Tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. No fucking shit. I wonder how all this burned. I wonder how all this concrete burned. But no, they won't show you photographs of that. Look at that. That's the electricity building again. I bet it's fantastic at night. Atlas holding up the celestial sphere, which it turns into a globe later on. Oh. Wow. Imagine that at night. You know, and this is like the 1800s, guys, yeah? It was all like it before. They're just fucking dupers deliping everyone's ass, showing us what's going on of this whole world. There it is, boom, classical world, boom, mint, boom, right there, boom. Where's it all gone? Oh, it all burnt down. Really? How long was it there? Oh, only a year. What, you built all that expense after your entire city was destroyed and you had to build it all back? What? How did you manage that? We're from Chicago, mate. Size of that. These are like railway carriages. I don't know if a railway train will come in. Poof, gee. But I bet that's crazy high looking up there. Wow. And uh, looks like it might be in Spain, but this looks definitely like a bit of Rome. And the machinery hall. Bunko booths, ever present. God, look how big it was, all the way to that Ferris wheel. So, were you telling me all of that area as well? Yeah, so all of that. Jeez. It's craziness. It's absolute craziness how all of that can be incinerated. Should have been bigger investigations, in my Brian. Like, give us some photographic evidence of all this concrete all incinerated and how all of this could end up in bricklets. How's that? How's that impossible? It's like it got exploded and ended up in a little pile. Imploded then. <laughs> yeah. Classic. So I'll give you that link to give you some idea of um, Chicago. So I'm going to show you a little bit of footage. I'll walk you through it. I don't want to do any volume because it'd probably be... Uh, and 
what you've got here is a cool, really cool bit of footage. And this is 1914, okay? So it's not too long after all the images we just showed you. And it's the first year of the First World War. The Americans are not yet involved, but they do have dirigibles. Interesting little belfry in the background chair and with the deliberate, you know, the uh, deliberable balloon there, don't you think? Uh, anyway, shit, I just lost my live feed. So we're going to have a look at this now. What you see, he's going to take a little flight and he's going to give us an idea of what the world is like in Chicago at this nice early period. So it's still full Tataria. Okay. And he's gone along the, uh, basically the coast of uh, Lake Michigan. 916 of you watching. Very, very kind. Happy flat it you all. So do gather round. Okay, get cutchy, get warm. Get that nice fuzzy feeling. Oh, you motherfucker. That always happens on these Google things. Don't worry, though. Because let's bring it up again. Error has occurred. Okay, let me do that. <clears throat> and I'll forward it on to where the, the structures are. I actually don't really want to see the coast anyway. That's boring. So let's just move it up to by here. Docklands. Then you come into this fantastic Italian stuff. Gives you an idea. And he flies over what looked like, you know, the Civic Center. And it's fantastic. So there's another balloon above, is there? Or is it somewhere from the ground? Yeah. So that's what oh, I get it. Okay. Do not glitch again, filmage. So there's a fish. It's a fish in the sky. Swimming along, floating along. I says Boston stuff, but it's not Chicago. Because I've got the evidence to prove that. I'll link, I'll link this video and get this video where I downloaded it somewhere on the internet. -o. But look how advanced it is for 1914, guys. Yeah, this is really early period. It's not that long after the Victorian period. And really high skyscrapers. All that white stuff is on there covering. Toil, maybe, I don't know. So he goes over some fantastic buildings in shortly. Check the domage on that one. Yeah, and all of that was destroyed, guys. Yeah, and then it's like these really old buildings. Excuse me, my bunny's on the fit. Right, you can You ate my F. Definite. Ooh, that's an interesting whatever it is. And that's on the seafront. Look at these buildings. Wow. So, yeah, how is it so advanced and futuristic looking from 1914? First World War, guys. Horse and carriage. Not many cars around. Yet the streets were built for, seemingly, forward thinking for motor cars. Especially in America. Especially the driving cities. So, how, how did you even know? Oh, wow. We knew they were going to be invented, you know. And what's with the tower? Look at the tower on top of there, guys. I wonder what that's for. Maybe it's a lift shaft? Could be. Oh, there's another tower on the other side there. Maybe a lift shaft, but it's not. They all go, that's interesting. I bet it's a fabulous view from up there. <laughs> and the railway side, like I said, it's a major uh, railway. A beach in Chicago. Oh, how fab. Look at that building there. What you notice with these old um, Italian buildings is they're all, they're all empty because they're hanging on to them. These things are astronomical prices, yeah? These custom houses and these giant buildings, they're all boarded up everywhere in Britain. Yeah, I've seen them in Birmingham, I've seen them up north, I've seen them in London, I've seen them everywhere, guys. And they're just laying empty. Um, and then I'm knocking them down. No, 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 no. They're keeping older than they know that they're going to be worth an absolute fortune. Check that out. Or it'd be worth nothing if everything falls through. <laughs> yeah. Nobody will own anything like they want. So let's forward that. Oh, there you are. Check out. Check out their mud flutters as well. So this is where it gets crispy, crispo. And it comes out to some amazing buildings now, as you'll see. Should speed it up a bit, maybe. Oh, speed it up. Oh, make it, qu make it go quicker. That's better. So it's a couple of cars on the road at that period, as you can see. Now check these buildings now. It's kind of creepy how everything is so advanced in 1914. It's not what I'd expect. 
you know, just out of the Victorian era. Yeah, everything's like that. Wow. So there's, um, the exposition doesn't exist. All of that area got like basically burnt out. What did they put in its place? Is it these blocks of flat here? Yeah? Because they look really old. Look at that one there. Wow, look at that. It's like a castle. Check that out, guys. Is he going to fly over here? I think he might. He might, yeah. Wow, that could be in England, like a university building. Check out that. Wow. So I don't see any burnt out anywhere. And there's a beach. Chicago Beach, which is like really, really busy back in the past, isn't it? Wow, look at that one there. Whoa, did you see that Tudor building? Let me go back to that. Whoa, what's that doing there? To the England. <laughs> Holy shit, that's amazing. Chicago. Wow. What's this thing here? Maybe that's what's left of the old exposition. It did say two buildings survived. Maybe that's it. You were, I was guessing he would fly over them. Maybe that's the other one. <laughs> the old jalopies on the road. Got to get some moonshine. Jimmy Cagney's in that one. Maybe face Nelson. But don't say that to his face. Don't like it. Check that building. It's like the Overlook Hotel. Woohoo. Yeah, it's a good little balloon journey, this. It's a real good one. That's what they're all doing on the beach. Bit of kayaking, bit of boating. So everything's pretty cushy in uh, 1914. The beaches are busy. Same on the, all the way down the coast, isn't it? You've got Atlantic City. Coney Island's got Luna Park, Van Brigantastic. So it would seem, just by looking at these images, that world was really fantastic. Try and find a seaside resort that's got as fantastic as all of this nowadays. Got no chance. Absolutely no chance. I used to love the British seasides when I was a kid because it still adds an echo of Victoriana about them, you know? Especially in them old um, curiosity shops, you know, where they sell, you know, rubber spiders you know the ones at fun face so not much else happening there right okay okie dokie lemon squoky now i'm going to come back for a second because we are going to talk about that head fuckery from the last video make our minds up what's going on okay am i here maybe not i don't know okay i'm here how many of you watching no, no, no nearly a thousand of you get some more people in please Make sure to share this out and do get some tissues because you may cry. You won't be crying because you're unhappy. Well, you might might be unhappy. I doubt it, though. Um, so we'll have a look at, uh, basically, in our last video, okay, like I said, it caused, rocked the boat a bit and it raised a few eyebrows. And, I, you know, I wanted to get you all thinking. Um, so the question is, is this anomalous Bunker Booth is on the wrong side and people are telling me it's a reverse image. Yeah, everything else in the image is the right way around. I can't get that wrong with Brian. Um, and plus, it's not exactly the same Bunker Booth. And plus, there's cars in the beginning going round in circles and circles. Owl is still owl, the word owl. If it was in reverse, wouldn't that word also be in reverse? Or is it just the Bunker Booth? Wouldn't that be just weird? Anyway, it's just me. So we'll have a little think about that for a second. And I want to ask, you know, see you guys in chat for two minutes before we get into some humorous stuff about what we think about it all. Okay. Now, because they raised a lot of eyebrows and a lot of questions were asked. Okay. And here we go. Now, the quandary is on, on this color setup as shit video. Okay. So what we found is it's not perspective because I've worked it all out in my brain. It would be impossible to, no matter which angle that would still be by that side of that pillar and these openings as well. This opening is this side, it's on the other. Anyway, so it's like it's a mirror image, I said, but I was thinking like, you know, or, you know, the mirror reality and the spookiness is going on with portals. Is that a fucking mirror, you know? So I was going, you know, I was thinking, well, yeah, you know, mirror image, maybe, maybe. So the tracks, let's follow the tracks. So we got like somebody, everyone be shouting at me, okay, saying, no, there's a cable. And it grabs on the cable car, okay, underneath there, okay, and it pulls her along. 
and they can establish whether the, the cable is actually stream or steam or electric driven because obviously it's a mechanism to drive a cable all the way under the whole of market street and be completely unaffected by any earthquake when the entire city's been destroyed does that make any sense anyway so the uh, one thing lines up here uh, rail and the other say just beyond but what you find is this things like not something that can be moved okay it is as you can see it's like a, it's got like greco-romano stuff on it okay it's got like um on tops of columns as well it's things like stone and sturdy because somebody suggested that they just pick it up and move it over which is like so two days apparently before the event we're saying no we're saying this is set up to lie about the whole of history and these events cover up here it is two days following the event bum 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 it looks completely different people are saying that it's in reverse now let's have a look at these tracks okay boom boom oh dear they're not the same are they so there's three one ending there next there next there maybe they are one end in there one end in there yes yet so the, the the lines and the tracks correlate boom boom okay boom boom oh shit is there another track beside it is it fuck over by you yeah well, that would take us that pedal over the other side here okay so people are suggesting this is a mirror image just have a little look if this is the case if it is in negative well obviously it's not negative because you know obviously because it's not in negative um <laughs> but is it a mirror image or is it a reversal because sometimes this can happen in all photography so i've been told so um excuse me let's just get on to that coming up to it so what you find is there's um the word owl is still owl are these people actually in reverse going down to it is the street opposite and is everything because the buildings are the same and so are the um advertising boards the ones that are still existing you see this is not a reverse image of the street um also um what you find with the secondary street is um on the first one um no telegraph poles at all at present like at all so have a little playback um people are saying because it's all underground so you've got no telegraph like it doesn't exist it's a telegraph underground why wouldn't you have telegraph on the busiest most important street of the west board guys hmm? no telegraph no wires yeah everywhere else in christendom is completely saturated with wires am i wrong and this place is full of trams and this guy this registration and these guys are going around in circles suicidal shit, guys so yeah apparently there's a wire or a cable comes under you and it pulls it along but nobody gonna substantiate what well, just the driving mechanism for that when they shout at me <coughs> offer no proof it's 20 past three in the afternoon mm. So I would definitely, there he is again, stupidly going round in circles and he'd be round again. He's just going round and fucking round and just, so Nathan Hale, I wonder if that's a film person, got his name up on the screen at the end, like a little cameo role, <laughs> like uh, Alfred Hitchcock does. So, yeah, but anyway. So I guess it's open for question anyway. I think that it's definitely not the same one. I think that this, they messed up on the first film, the movie, the second film. I think this is the original. I think it could be further back, guys. I really do. I really, really do. They're not mere image when they're walking down to it, you see. Yeah. Every, everything. I mean, what I'm trying to say is the buildings are the right way around. So when you get down to the bollard, how can that only be the reverse image? Maybe some sort of weird camera magic I'm unaware of. Just sounds weird to my head anyway. <laughs> So, uh, what you'd expect if Chicago or San Francisco were incinerated from all them photographs we'd be looking at is this. This is what we see for Dresden. This is what when you do not see all of them stacks and stacks of people that have been killed in San Francisco or, or, or Chicago, any of these fires. And this is what we should be witnessing. You only see them. You know, obviously, the city's less devastated 
in some of these World War II shots. Yeah, when you get to San Francisco or any of the American cities, look at this again with the wires. See what I mean? Nothing in Market Street. That's a definite giveaway, that is. That's a studio set. So, these are some of the San Francisco shots. And that I talked about my last post, which everyone's been thinking about all week. And like I said, with that first shot, you know, they just hang around in the street while the smoke incinerates their city. And they just sit out and wait. Hmm? It's that same thing with that. So what? A pulley pulls that in every street in Chicago. I'll get your head around that, guys. Oof. I was not even done. That's nice. Farmer Divine's Peace Mission. Hmm. Oh, that's a nice old stone there. A bit of Chicago. The size of this building in Chicago. <sighs> Again, top heavy. All the juice is on top. Half of it's missing, or quarter of it. And these huge skyscrapers they have in Chicago. It's just amazing, aren't they? Look at that one. <sighs> Woohoo! But again, it's that same, you know, feeling ever descending, smaller, smaller, smaller. You know, same thing going on. And look at this. Wow. Absolutely fantastic there. Old Tataria. And Mega City Fires, which you've been looking into a lot. Okay, so um yeah, it's crazy how they don't show us them bodies. It's like never gonna never gonna happen because they don't really exist, do they? So anyway, brace yourselves. We're gonna have a little giggle. This was my favorite meme of the week. I think it was fantastic. Yeah. What do you mean you can see curvature, dude? <laughs> dude, what's the matter with you? Slap him, Jesus. It's no curvature. Yeah. Stupid devil. Yeah, he looks a bit stupid as well. He's like, well, the 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 Dimika Dude, that's my favourite one of the week. I love that. I posted that on Facebook. I know Michelle. It's hilarious, isn't it? Calisine, uh, squirrel on the magic mushroom. So, ironing, it? it's just like having a hobby. <laughs> a lot of these um, these um, memes and things I find not deliberately misogynistic, but they do see. That's not right. That's a man who a woman, isn't it? The other thing. Yeah, no, that's it. Um, male chauvinist. They, some of them seem to be. But that's the mindset of the 1950s, I'm afraid. Things have changed. Now, this better not be a fucking reality. And I am just saying. Creamed possum, guys. Uh, you moan about the Chinese eating dog. Yeah, sweet potatoes. Oh, actually, that sounds quite nice. Garnished in a coon fat gravy. <laughs> Is that raccoons? So they kill raccoons to make a fat gravy. That'd be nice. A raccoon dripping. Um, and creamed possum. Yeah, I don't want that to be a reality. If I find out that's true, I'd be very disappointed with life. Not that I am not already. I'm just saying. Cream possum rice. They're fucking cute. Don't eat cute things. Jello is a gay dessert. Now, we don't have jello in Britain. I'm just saying we don't. Jello is something completely different in Britain. Uh, it's the gaiety of Jello, sparkling fruit, fresh flavors that appeal to the nursery crowd, grown ups too. All right. Okay. Jello is a gay dessert. Yes. I would slap you, but shit splatters. <laughs> oh, I wish I'd have known that one years ago. I'd have used that. <laughs> I'll give you a slap of shit, slap, splatters. Yeah, splatters comes up a lot in Flat of British. I'm my good mother, Susan. My name's Amy. <laughs> See that a lot. Get your Willie's service chair. Where? Uh, at service, uh, J Jeep. Service and, and sales. Okay, so if you want your Willie serviced, go to there. I haven't got a phone number, sorry. Ah, this is true as well from Scaffold, Scaffold County, Council, County Council. They give us excellent warnings. Warning, people are dangerous. If you know any people, report them at once to the authorities. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Yeah, especially mascots. 
But that's causing division, isn't it? Just like flat earth causes division between globe heads and flat earthers and things like that. It's like in my head, it's all that's got to just go. Not in Armageddon times, no time for it. It's bullshit, it's division. The education classes, 1976, 1977. So at least they're not lying. Job center, experts, academics, consultants, advertisers, specialists. <laughs> uh, knowledge is power, and power corrupts absolutely. Yeah, you don't want knowledge. Non experts predict that the year 2010, knowledge and facts will be redundant and even harmful to you, your family, and society as a whole. Yeah, I completely concur with that. Yeah, I think it's happened anyway. Yeah, I've halved my knowledge and doubled my strength. <laughs> You've formed gut feeling in the last six months. So there you are. Dumb yourself down. Don't watch Flight of the British. You'll be fucking doomed for dumbing down. De educate yourself. This is true. Again, from Scaffold County Council, they give you excellent warnings. It's illegal to gather in groups of one. If you were found within six foot of yourself, <laughs> whether in public or at home, you could face prosecution, resulting in a fine or a prison sentence of up to six years. Okay. You hear the year first, guys, yeah? It's illegal to gather in groups of one. So be careful. Don't get caught. New studio show, 100% of criminals were once children. This is a true fact, guys. Reduce children, reduce crime. <laughs> I suppose that's true, isn't it? All serial killers were once children. Mm. Okay, thought crime. Help us stop the Ripper from killing again. Look at his handwriting. Okay, let's look at the Yorkshire Ripper's handwriting. Let's see what he's saying. Dear Veronica, so nice to hear from you again. As I requested, have, have many... Ugh, details um mr s lynch 34 mil lane scarborough oh and he gives you his postcode and telephone number oh they must have had a shit of a time finding jack the ripper so he gave his actual link and telephone number it's true he's one of them he's uh, one of the um the jimmy savile prince charles bono and frank bruno gang Kick a celebrity in a bollocks. Now, which celebrity? Let's have a little vote. I'm watching you all here now in chat. There's uh, 960 of you watching. Super fantastic. Great. Look where you were, no one. Quick, quick, bring out the speedboat. Which celebrity would you kick in the bollocks? Come on, 960 of you. I want to hear. Now, I wouldn't go for Jezza. Yeah, Jezza never went with the fucking BBC stuff. Okay. He's like, you know, I wouldn't kick Jezza in the bollocks. He's okay. Okay, but who would you kick in the bollocks? Yorkshire Ripper, um, Prince Harry, Ginger Bollocks, she wants a kick. Who else? Tom Hanks, oh, definitely. Boris, um, Bill Gates, he's not real, by the way. Um, Bono, yeah, definitely kick Bono in the bollocks. Uh, Jezza, I love Jezza too, CP Coop. Have you seen his daughter? I'm oh, just saying. Um, yeah, okay, who else? Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's definitely going to get a bollocks smash. Robert De Niro, his bollocks will be squished. Definitely, because he's devil. Um, Hancock, yeah, he can have a fucking kick in a bollocks. Keone West, yeah, he's going to have two flat bollocks. Peony Morgan, if you cut his bollocks off. Well, Sandra got bollocks. She can have a kick in a bollocks. Biden, he can have a kick in a bollocks before we sniff his head. Bob Geldof can have a kick in a bollocks. Oh, bam, can have a kick in a bollocks. Queen Bill Knight can have a kick in a bollocks. Madonna can have a definite kick in the bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Gret, Greta can have a kick in a bollocks. Fucking kick Greta right in the bollocks. The Pope can have a kick in the bollocks. Joe Rogan can have a kick in his one bollock. He's only got one bollock, like Hitler. Nazi uh, police <laughs> kicking the bollock. Thomas <laughs> Michael Obama kicking the bollocks. Ooh, fucking hell. Bouncy bollocks. Elton John. No, oh, he's too much of a fucking girl. He just cried. Probably hasn't got bollocks. Probably got smooth bits. Megan Merkel. She can have a kick in the bollocks. Larry Henry kicking the bollocks. Any world leaders, chuck them out there and I'll dish them too, guys. Can't get in more trouble than I actually am any fucking way. So, yeah, Don Pettit. Um, yeah, he kick, I kick him in the bollocks in a microsecond. <laughs> <laughs> See, 
hold on to your arms. Definitely having it in the fucking bollocks. Oh, Ellen Degenerate. She's having it in the bollocks. Yeah. Lenny Henry, he was cheeky as fuck to me once. I was only trying to be nice to him. Fucking thought he was all important. Buzz Aldrin, yeah, he can have it in the bollocks, but he punch you in the mouth if you don't get him quick because he's quick. He's quite hard, you know, uh, Buzz. He fucked up, um, you know, Sybil, didn't he? But he's a bit of a pussy. Uh, Tiger Ranty, yeah, kick him in the fucking bollocks. Fucking thinking about that. Thatcher's Ghost, kick Thatcher's Ghost in the bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Elon Musk can have it in a bollocks, Santa Claus. <laughs> Stanley Fucci can have it in the coochie. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell, she can have it in a bollocks. <laughs> that was brilliant. That one. Seth Rogen, who oh, you can definitely have it in the fucking bollocks, yeah. That, as I said, like, don't learn Kim New Young, yeah, he's in our gang. He's not having it in the bollocks, okay? Uh, my dad, yeah, Ben Gray, you can have a kick in the bollocks. Fucking no problem. I'll do it. Uh, Squiddle Snipe. <laughs> Dig up Saville. You can't make the ad 20 foot of concrete put on top. Zalmox, he says. Billy Bovaski, Pope Jide. <laughs> Lady Gaga. Yeah, you could, she can have a kick, kick in the fanny and the willy. <laughs> and the bollocks. <laughs> Kick all three with one, with one Dr. Man. <laughs> Rolf Harris, so he's definitely having a kick in the bollocks. Adolf and Star, Adolf Stalin, yeah, 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 I know him. Yeah, he can have a kick in the bollocks. Um, Thatcher's statue, I, I wear steel toe cap boots for that Adam Cook, okay? Don't want to hurt my toe on Margaret Thatcher. She hurt, hurt me enough in my past as well. Drakeford, <laughs> banned from hundreds of pubs in Wales. You can have a kick in the bollocks. <laughs> have you got a pair? I fucking doubt it. Gary Glitter, nah, man, he ain't got bollocks. He got smooth bits. Uh, Michael Obama, we've said. Claudia Roth, uh, big Mike. So, yeah, we can have the whole show about who we're going to kick in the bollocks, can we, guys? Mika can have a kick in the bollocks. <laughs> Prince Philip, dig him up. I'll do it. Oh, sorry, Queenie. Nah, we're not kicking the Queen in the bollocks. Hippie saying free hippie. All oh, right, okay. Stan Richards, D Martin, D Martin. No, 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 no. Anyway, that was a good one. Let's move on. All right, childcare skills for parents, teachers, and carers with psychosis and multiple psychopathic personality disorders by Dr. J. Mentis. So. You get that a lot, don't you? Uh, you know, child carers, they sort of, I think, were part of their job description is psychopathy, okay, to look after children in the first place. They're all fucking weird. They were in my childhood, teachers, except for my that hippie teacher, Mrs. Thurston, which is, she was a hippie. Um, the rest were really weird. Manholes. <laughs> Exposed. No, that's not good. <laughs> all right, what concrete climax, dripping and wet? Watch it get hard. Concrete climax. <laughs> All grey action. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, this is a good one. I would love this as a kid, as an annual. Spontaneous human combustion. Why is the telecameras there? They're actually waiting for someone to explode. Did you have that? Puzzles, cartoons, matches, remains, and <laughs> much, much more. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. <laughs> Charlie says, He that smiteth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Next is, Oh, is a bay, my mummy and daddy, or you might get killed, says Charlie. Charlie says, Okay, you hear the year first, lessons learned. So that was um, another public of service announcement. No wonder we were up so fucked in Britain. Oh, for your fifth birthday today and she's painting oh she, she likes blake uh, the creative artistic child looking i used to have look-ins did you ever have a look-in <laughs> i had look-ins but i don't remember this cover i think this would have definitely imprinted in my, imprinted in my consciousness so yeah mate get the year 2020 you won't want to fucking see another nurse i'm telling you now they'll do weird dances and i'm ugly <clears throat> choice Sausage orphans, only 75p. Odd enough Christmas. I don't I hope they don't actually mean actual orphans. I don't know, it's difficult to say in this world, guys. You know what goes down. Don't struggle. You 
can't afford, you can't avoid the inevitable. So I'm guessing she's a plague doctor. So don't struggle, okay? Roll up your sleeve, get your magnets out. You can have a game of play magnets where you am. I can smell this photo. Let's take a moment to reminisce. Now, it is a nostalgic video. I do dig that. Now, we've just fired our cat guns in the garden, okay? Playing British and Germans. I'm on the German side. Okay, I'm Rommel. And can you smell your cap gun? Hmm? Yeah? I know. It's lovely, that memory, isn't it, guys? Did you all have a cap gun memory? Yeah, spec guns are cool, but cap guns are the best. You see? Yes, smell that lovely gunpowder. Hmm? I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Hmm. The case of the too high butt crack. He wanted to love her. He wanted to save her. But a butt crack went all the way up to her damn shoulder blades. Let's have a look at that. So it does. That's an unusual phenomena. Not that that would be off-putting. <laughs> While you're down there. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, let's just skip that one. Sorry. I kicked the crap out of Joan Collins. Beg me to stop, Joan, or I'll beat your ass all over again. Maybe you should have had a Snickers. Joan. Let's just look at that picture. That is Joan Collins. Wow, I'm almost starstruck. Do you know Joan Collins? Yeah, she's actually looking like young Joan Collins. Must be all that adrenochrome she's in ass. Right. Reminiscence and nostalgia time for people. If you're in or in America, if you're in America land, you missed out on the greatest thing that ever was. And it's called the young ones. Do you know about them? Watch the motorhead ace of spades episode. Just put that into YouTube. So all we get, right, is Mike, he's the boring person, right? What he does in the program is he balances up all of the insanity. So we have Rick, okay, who is still a virgin, okay? And we have Vivian. Neil, Neil, orange peel, this is your conscience speaking. Neil, okay, who's been wearing the same underpants since 1972, is a hippie, yeah? Kill all hippies so he's a hippie and vivian okay rick vivian and rick who is a communist by the way so if you haven't seen all i suggest you go and watch the entire series from first to last i can't see nothing about mike he's the boring bastard but as i said he balances up body insanity anyway and you come see us picking the forehead Oh, do stop sniveling, Colin. It doesn't matter how distressed or hurt you claim to be. Studies clearly demonstrate that crying just irritates grown-ups. Maybe if you <laughs> wept less than, you wouldn't be an orphan now. I'm sorry I'm laughing. The world is just so preposterous and unkind. Don't cry, Colin. Stop sniveling. Grow up. Talent-free community art expeditions in a library yeah they should have them only my photographs would be really good now warning online romance it's all fun and games until someone buys an air ticket <laughs> you don't want that turning up at your fucking door <laughs> oh come on guys yeah, come over. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> the guy who's invited her over thinks that she's a 27-year-old 20, model. <laughs> He's getting that. <laughs> uh, babe got old. Anyway. Son, if you masturbate too much, you go blind. Dad, I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry okay fuck that red thing <laughs> i'm having none of that shit <laughs> Isn't it? Sorry, that red thing <laughs> sorry well, it amuses me <laughs> matty whatever happens don't ever go to 2020 now let's just stop on this image for a bit for whatever reason what's that tattoo skull and crossbones a w in a W would be in a J. The fucking hell would she know that? She's just a kid. That's a really weird thing to put on an app. 
that threw me. Anyway, did they actually say that in um, Back to the Future? Marty, whatever happens, don't go ever go to year 2020. If they did, it was very prophetic. I've got a feeling that he did say that to my professor. The wankers. Now, I bet you they're fantastic. No, don't laugh. Wankers are all right. Okay. Los wankers. The winky. Salvaza, Canta, and Tony, the wankers. Here on stage for your entertainment, we have Las Wankas. I believe brilliant. Stuff crust Jesus. Keep feeding my faith with Bobby Vogel. Super stereo. So that's an album. Super crust, pepper army Jesus. I bet that tastes good. A bit crystalline. Music to bury. Your Dreams by, by Carlton Bonnet. Yeah, he's got a bit of a bonnet on him, haven't he? Is that a real hairdo? Anyway, it's a nice friendly cover. I don't know what it's saying and what it's summing up. But whatever it is, it's got a deeper undertone, hasn't it? Like Uzi Berry. Anyway, let's move on. Ken and Judy Steele. I feel good. Well, Ken, I don't know why you're feeling good with them collars. The rest of you looks pretty good. But them collars, they got to go, sir. Okay, we don't do big collars. Um, no, Judy's, Judy's fine. Judy's fine. Nothing wrong. Okay. I'm not going to be slating these good people. Homo homoni. Now, homo homoni, however, yeah, except they were the second biggest band in Uzbekistan next to Kremble. Okay, check out their lead singer. Wow, he looks like Captain Fantastic. Why is his, it's like his head's like... Is that his head? I don't know. It might be someone else's. Well, wow, they're like ABBA on acid. I don't think it, they're like in these suits much. So they're a bit Space 1999, isn't they? <laughs> don't laugh. I think they're good. Got all their records. Oh, what about this guy? Yeah. Cock van der Pan. Yeah, goodbye, my love, goodbye, Hathatama, by Cock van der Paar. Yeah, it's one of my favorite Dutch pianists. Del Decker, he touched me. Katu, no, look, don't, don't laugh, but Katui, Katui is a great singer. Katui is singing you sweet, sweet lullaby, my cocoa sleep. I got fuzzy hair. Yeah. Best friend, Jorge. Katui. Don't laugh. He might be like uh, possessed or something. I know it's making me giddy. Ugh, I feel a bit sick. <coughs> no, I feel sick now. Yoya, Taxiria. Sings greatest hits of whatever country they look like that in. I'm not even going to mention a country because it might be, like, they might take offense. And I can't really. Insults every country in the world. That would, not be, that would not do. What? No, that's perfectly acceptable. There's nothing wrong with him. Well, I have a heart. He's probably lovely. Probably killed no one. Probably. Queen had the best album covers ever. Apart from pros and cons of Hitchhiking, Roger Waters' cover, which is obviously renowned for being the greatest man cover of all time. I think this is pretty good. Now, I'm leaving this open for Mel to do one of the famous jokes. I'm not going to say because I would never think amazing. Bicycle, flat bottom girls, they make the rocking wheel go round, yeah. And these were a great heavy metal band, yeah. Boned, up at the crack. You ever seen Boned? Yeah, they were fantastic. They played Monsters of Cock Rock. Oh, Vet Olmeyer, shredding for Satan. Hmm, what is shredding for Satan? Nice little amplifier. She's got Satan there. She seems like a nice, homely, sort of neighborly American girl. She doesn't really look like the Satan worshipping type. You can't really tell in this day and age, anyway. Drum, drum, drum by Jimmy Tickertube. Now, there's no, absolutely no context in this picture whatsoever. Yes, it's great, isn't it? Anyway, at Licklet, Linkletter, Amphetamine Party. Yeah. <coughs> Scratch that up, boy. <laughs> How it works. Surfing for porn for all of the family. Yeah, it's the need that in the future. Oh, the ladybird books of benefit cheats. 
you can cheat at the benefit thousands of pounds lay in the garden all day reading the newspaper smoking a pipe and giving your child toys to make it go mental <laughs> that's what this means sorry welcome Genealogist convention. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not even I can say that. <laughs> oh, fucking life. Oh, Billy's tripping balls. Oh, yeah. Billy, you got to stop tripping, my son. Get getting you. Oh, the Heidi boys. Oh, Heidi boys. The secret of the old MILF. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know what MILFs are. Are they like gilfs? Your kill, sir. They're like granny, should have Tintin drops a fuck ton of acid and trips balls. Fuck off. Get away from me, Mr. Haddock. You're freaking me the fuck out. Tintin, that's what happened to him. Fucking acid. Can you still breathe, Grandma? Tap, tap. Can you hear this? She's not saying anything. Do you think she's okay? You know about Schrodinger's cat, don't you? Yes. Well, oh. Well, that's okay then, isn't it? Anyway, life is strange. I'm coming back because we got something interesting you may not have expected to see on Flat of British or here. Well, it's not my fault. Flashy thing, Joe. Just forget everything you just seen, okay? Like the men in black, I got a flashy thing, okay? Just flashy thing, you. Forget everything you just seen. That'll do it. So, next bit to my interesting vlog. 895 you're watching. That's super fantastic, Grace. It says a different number on there. I don't know how many. It doesn't matter. The next bit is, have you ever wondered, outside of a blaring, shouting, manic Adolf Hitler, what, what he really sounds like? Well, turns out there's one interview of his real voice and how he speaks available out there, which I thought was really interesting and somewhat connected to thine self. I'll tell you now. So he has um, an interview, okay, where Field Marshal Mannerheim, okay, I'll just show you this. There's Mannerheim. He signed a signature to my grandmother when my uncle Oscar got killed, okay, when he was with my father on the Mannerheim thread. we so interview that Hitler will be interviewing him about. So Mannerheim goes, who's a very nice chap, um, goes to um, Hitler and he's asking and requesting, can we have some shit to fucking beat the Russians up? Because we're running out. Yeah. And it was like, well, actually, I'll have to tell you what's going on. You know, this doesn't strike me as a psychopathic when he's saying, you know, how, how much do my people have to take and suffer? The workers are suffering. And, you know, it's like he's like an empath. He's like, you can hear emotion in his voice. Is this the case? So obviously speaking in German. OK. And one thing that they do say that... Um, this is the this is oh thank you very much shippy shake that's really sweet of you is that he done this interview in this famous um railway carriage where the surrender of france took part um and it was bugged by the ss now apparently um they weren't supposed to record it's the only recording out there and apparently people died because of it but it, uh, towards the end it abruptly ends where it's discovered when one of the ss bosses comes in and said not that you're not a year this shit this is the Führer, yeah and it goes dead yeah so it's the only bit of conversation where you can get a feel for what this guy sounds like it's nothing like you would ever ever expect okay at all so we'll have a little listen okay and we'll have a little think now it is curious that i've got manaheim's signature down there okay if you don't know about it battle of fire ice is when the finish because he's finnish by the way my father's estonian and he joined the finnish boys regiment to fight the russians three years in the trenches so manheim goes to the axis and says can you give me some shit and this is what hitler says you ready i'm gonna have to just move my microphone for a bit and i'll come back okay hi joe mama good to see you i can give you all shouts but watch this bit first and there's more to come okay we are on a 30 minutes past 11 uk Yes, 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 yes,
Wir wussten das selber auch nicht so ganz genau, wie ungeheuerlich diese Strafanlösung war. Aber das hätten wir nicht geahnt im Winterkrieg. Im Winterkrieg hätten wir das nicht geahnt. Natürlich hatten wir den Eindruck, dass sie gut gerüstet waren. Aber so, wie sie im Wirklichen. Und jetzt ist ihm gar kein Zweifel, was, was, sie, hat, was sie hatten in ihren Schild. Das ist gut. Sie haben die ungeheuerste Rüstung, die äh, Menschen denkbar ist. Also, wenn mir jemand gesagt hätte, dass ein Staat mit, mit Wenn mir jemand gesagt hätte, dass ein Staat mit 35.000 Tanks anreden kann, dann hätte ich gesagt, sie sind wahnsinnig. 35.000 35 Panzer. Wir haben, über, haben zur Zeit über 34 Panzer, 34000 Panzer vernichtet. Wenn mir das jemand gesagt hätte, ich hätte gesagt, sie, wenn mir ein General von mir erklärt hätte, dass hier ein Staat 35.000 Panzer in dieser Ziege hat, sie, sie sind äh, alles doppelt oder zehnfach. Das ist Wahnsinn, sie sind Gespenster. Das haben wir nicht für möglich. Wir haben, vorher erzählt, wir haben Fabriken gefunden, allein einer da in Kramaroskaya zum Beispiel. Das war vor zwei Jahren ein paar und wir hatten keine Ahnung. Heute ist dort eine Panzerfabrik, die in der, in der ersten Schicht der etwas über 30.000 und in den Vollausbau über 60.000 Arbeiter beschäftigen sollte. Eine einzige Panzerfabrik. Wir, sind, wir haben sie besetzt. Eine, eine gigantische Fabrik. Arbeiter machen die allerdings über die Tiere gehen. Dass sie 20 Jahre, über 20 Jahre, 25 Jahre bei uns Freiheit gehabt haben, sich zu rüsten. Und alles, alles ausgegeben für Rüstung. Nur Rüstung. Das ist ein, ein ich sagte vorher den Herrn Staatspräsidenten, ich habe das vorher nicht geahnt, hätte ich es geahnt. Da wäre mir noch schwer zu Herz gewesen, aber den Entschluss hätte ich dann erst recht gefasst. Denn es blieb ja gar keine andere Möglichkeit. Die war mir ja schon klar, schon in der 39 dass der so mal ist, zu kommen musste. Ich hatte nur den alten Kriegisten noch mehr. Denn im Zweiten Weltkrieg, das wäre ja nur gewesen. wir auch zu brauchen. Das sehen wir heute besser, als wir es damals vielleicht noch erkannten. Ich werde dazu brauchen. Und mein Ganzes, ich wollte an sich noch im, im Herbst 39, wollte ich an sich noch den Westwert zu durchführen. Nur dieses dauernde schlechte Wetter, das wir hatten, das hat uns daran gehindert. Denn unsere ganze Bewaffnung, da war ja, äh, es ist eine schöne Wetterbewaffnung. Sie ist sehr tüchtig, sie ist gut, aber es ist leider eine schöne Wetterbewaffnung. Wir haben das jetzt hier ja auch in dem Krieg gesehen, unsere ganzen Waffen sind natürlich auf den Westen zugeschnitten. Und wir alle waren der Überzeugung, das war bisher dann, das war unsere Meinung eben, seit den ältesten Zeiten her, da kann man nicht Krieg führen. Diese, musste diese riesige Umstellung unserer Divisionen vom Westen nach Osten vorgenommen werden. Erste Besetzung in den hatten wir in Norwegen diese Aufgabe. Im selben Augenblick kam, kam ein, ich darf es heute übrigens sagen, sehr großes Unglück über uns, nämlich die Schwächen, die sich in Italien ergeben hatten, durch erstens die nordafrikanische Situation, dann zweitens durch die Situation in Albanien, Griechenland. Ein ganz großes Unglück. Wir mussten nun helfen. Das bedeutete für uns mit einem Schlag zunächst wieder eine Zerreißung unserer Luftwaffe, Zerreißung unserer Panzerverbände, während wir gerade dabei waren, die Panzerverbände hier für den Osten fertig zu machen, mussten wir nun mit einem Schlag zwei Divisionen, zwei geschlossene Divisionen, das ist dann der dritte geworden, abgeben und dauernd sehr große Verluste dort ergänzen. Das sind doch blutige Kämpfe gewesen, die in der Wüste ausgebrochen worden sind. 
Das alles hat uns natürlich dann auch später im Osten gefehlt. Und es war nicht anders denkbar als. Wir wussten das selber auch nicht so ganz genau. He gives away a couple of secrets there, uh, apart from like uh, numbers and stuff. His total power operation balance sort of full two years before they're actually. So, um, that's a bit of you know, like to give a secret. I wonder they didn't want um, the SS to or anybody to hear. Um, and um, not caring about the workers and stuff. It's like, would that, is that why you're just yeah, It's still quite because it's so poignant. What he's talking about the future. Yeah, the 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 future. The future. The the you know, when he said about this great situation. It's a real, like, I get a buzz off. It's like, whoa, this fucking serious business going down here. So that's the only recording you're going to hear of the actual voice of man. And it really does. Uh, uh, on the like just saying, I thought that was a very amicable meeting. Anyway, let's give you all a bit of a shout. Is Kat in the house? Kat D? What do Kat? Soy cow. Martin turn Hitler sound off. Oh. Martin turn the sound off. I don't know, I just covered the space. Okay, there was a translation between the three, between, between uh, Mannerheim, the translator, and Hitler. Okay. Uh, no, same advice. Can't hear you. Oh, it's still on. Now I understand. <laughs> okay, I get you. Yeah, no, no more, you don't. Okay. So, um, who we got here? We got Sonia Testament in the house. Hitler was taking over your show. Yeah, he was. I didn't hear that in the background. Can't hear it from you, actually. Bent over. Have you come back? Hey, man, just finished what? What is it, bent over? Just finished my book. Did you? Thank you. What do you think? Bravo. Okay, my book is out. It's going to be in my hands. Basically, I got the cover. Uh, two days ago, fantastic. So I'm waiting to get it in my hand to be printed next week. So it could be like in my hand next week. So that's exciting. I can't wait for that. I've been looking forward to that, actually. It's good to have something to look forward to. Uh, hit the soundtrack playing. All right, all right. You've all told me that. We're moving on. Anyway. Perfect. I didn't know it, but I can't hear it. Anyway. Right, we're moving on. We're going to have some shares, and we're going to have some more thoughts, and we're going to just hang out do fry with British stuff. So make sure to share this out. And like my video if you did. Um, and we got loads more juice to come. So enjoy. Fat films. Fat films. Fat films. Fat films. So nice little bit of video here. All right, we've done them. Nice little bit of video here of 1967, the very year that I entered this realm, um, of the King's Road. And I love it. It's a bit of 60s. Okay. And it gives you a real feeling for basically what London was like back in the day. Check this out. Right, let's check out the shops. Ravel, I remember the shoe shop. Ravel. Ooh, Matt Co Cortina, Matt White. Check out the hippies. Check out the chinks. 60 chinks. That's nice. Oh, Biba, remember that? Oh, uh, yeah. Red busage. Oh, what's people doing on the very fashionable Saturday, Saturday. It's brilliant. Get out of the 60s people. Oh, splash of psychedelia all over the build. Lord John, I saw a jacket from Lord John. Punched in the arm and the teacher got the back. Let's make the jacket. Whoa. And that's just in the local clothes shop. What a great fan. Oh, he's got people in there, isn't it? Beep, beep. Excellent movement there. Chelsea Builds in Society. Oh, look at the windows, boys. Is that window tags? Window tags. Okay. Nice little bed flood. He's going to lock this room, Jerry. Okay. Well, that's an interesting window. And down to the market. Oh, some British stuff. 
I try to have one. Absolutely stonking. And a hippie outside number 49. Just been tripping. He's got a hickey on his neck. He's got a wicked shirt on. He's got some dangly crystals. Actually, he's got a stopper off of the door, not to pretend. The neighbors next door look nice. And all of the kids in the street are going to go watch him. Psychedelic. He's with Cara. I think he's a rover. Don't know what it is. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> I love it, huh? Love is all you need. That's my favorite saying. I say that. Love is all you need. Love is all you need. Because it's true. Right. And there's my book cover that came in this week. Okay. All completed. Books gone proof, printed, everything else. And I should have it in my hand, hopefully, this week. And uh, let's have a look at some images. Okay. Let's have a look at some funky images I've been collecting over the last few days. So, um, Empty cities. Now, um, some friend of mine, it was Lisa uh, Sinetti, done a website on Facebook that got really popular. And she'd done some pictures in there. And she was thinking about, basically, I passed these over because she wanted examples of empty cities. And this is the best, St. Petersburg. You can just see these thing. this thing is just completely buried. Look at this thing here. Buried, has gone. Everything's just buried, gone. Not a soul, not a bird, not a bug not a fire not anything going on everything in the sky gone it's just so spooky such a massive city like no actioning mud no infrastructure no lampposts no telegraph no pavements no planters no anything the roads are just completely barren all the buildings submerged just crazy check it out the size of these things again with the uh you know just things going a whole lot deeper and these indigenous peoples from um south america i'm wondering what they see in their frame of reference to want to dress like this Are they actually seeing like you know for jungle spirit forest people like the woods fairies and stuff come up the trees Rabbit keeps banging the floor. Really annoying, off-putting. So um, the Vanderbilt um, in Fifth Avenue, New York, we always looked at this building because it's fantastic. And the narrative behind it is insane. But check it out for monsters. Do, 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 do. Some, of the, some of the shots are better. Check this out next door. All the way down Fifth Avenue, all of these mansions. For sure they never built it in that area. For sure these are a damn sight older. They're just massive. Dug out the mud, all of the fantastic mansions of Fifth Avenue. Huge. Check it out. See, they're all mud flooders already. You've got to come up to the Vanderblit, which is definitely a mud flooder. A raised door. Second story here, uh, next door. And, um, you know, all of the elites bought these houses. Vanderblits, the Astors, all along Fifth Avenue. And Munsters as well. Gomez sharpening his railings keep them people out so we should check this out for the size of a railing uh gate pretty bloody big isn't it rabbi you're gonna get beat up what you doing you be stamping around really fucking annoying what's attention check this out then there it is a bit of new york all about it and the building that we've seen just now is definitely gone this is an displacement Oh, it's massive, isn't it? Imagine what it's like inside. What about tech it got? Oh, there's a nicer shot. So that one's gone. And there is from, I guess, in this behind angle, board over the door. That's interesting. Hmm. Not many people in the street in Fifth Avenue, is there? They're like, maybe they just not, don't like people around there. It is a bit exclusive. And look at these railings as well. So, yeah, that's an older world. That's just fantastic, isn't it? Compared to what the shit have they got today. It's terrible. Check it out. Antiquatech, Fifth Avenue. All the elites living on one street, Millionaire's Row. Look at them. That one is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I bet if it was flooded up to there, you could just step out into that door. Mansion. 
man ion. Somebody suggested this concerning, um, I thought I was really interested, said in my comments, what if that all of these buildings had some sort of self-destruct me mechanism integrated into it, that maybe if there was a frequency or a sound or a vibration or something that it would activate, or not even that, maybe just something else. And I thought, well, that is really good. We don't know much about this, ar this architecture and this, this technology. There was more going on we don't understand definitely. Wouldn't that be a thing if they had a self-destruct mechanism built into them that they literally implode? Wouldn't that be something? Check that though. So, and an old exposition shows you balloonage, grand fate. So it's actually telling you much, but it's an early exposition. And electric cars. It looks, seems like these were being used all the way up to 1900. Come home, plug them in, and then zip off. And then they just, it's sickening that they replaced it with fossil fuels or whatever they're called petrol oil Ugh. and then look at that vintage electric cars to go snaz they are all shiny and lovely oh i'd love one no i'd really love one look how comfy them chairs are just laid back yeah you could have your little tablet on you whatever your phone you know for cam view record your trip You're funky i'd love one look at him don't he look funky what tires have he got Rack and purine. It's got all oh, these are uh, great development, these butterfly uh, suspensions for uh, the muddy roads. Whoa, that looks like it might tip over forward, but again, electric, all electric. Not too many people or cars on the road there. He looks surprised to see a camera. And how is it? How's the hang on? How's the camera catching the image in motion? Hmm, there's a question as well. No obstruction or any blurring. So I don't know, but it's the religious people and they do weird stuff. Makes you feel really like, uh, run away. I like this purple domage going on though. Whatever color, violet. But it's, it's that pretty and it's not all at the same time. Yeah. Look at this guy. He's got a hard job on, hasn't he? Check this out there, fashies. Yeah. With the laurel bound round it. And uh, this dude's got to keep that up. But look, there's nothing that's missing. You know, this, everything is detailed to attention on you. I wonder what that is. It's just a circle. But again, they would probably mean something. Now, that's a lovely little uh, picture, that. And, ooh. Wherever that is, the gravel, sure, Amsterdam, it says there. And look at that example of one of those out of the place buildings. Where's the rest gone? <laughs> Crazy good example. Look how detailed they are as well. That's 10. And look at this belfry. It's got so much tech on it. Looks like a 5G tower, tower of today. Only with more going on. Even this one's got more going on. Wow, look at them slits out there as well. I don't know, they have them there, slits there. They're not to look out of, they're not to shoot arrows. It's not like bow and arrow days, is it? Slits there too. Hmm. Slits there and slits there, slits there and slits there. They're not windows. It must be something to do with the tech. I'll have to think about that later on down the road. And uh, ooh, another nice Munich building, but what the hell? Look at the size of that. It's fantastic, isn't it? And look at that building there. It looks like that one in San Francisco. Same Denny and Don't double, uh, double twin tower thing going on. A bit of the Moorish world in Germany. So what's this? What's this? Okay. So um, this is Moses, dude. And another dude. I don't know who he is. So no mates. Funny how uh, we call one another mates, isn't it? And like if you have like, a mate... It's like, I'm going to make you a mate. And you can have mates like, yo, mate. And you can also have shipmates, can you? So I call mates, isn't it? So what's that? No fornicates. Is that no, like, no fornicate then? No hurties. So, oh, this is good. No mates. No fornicates. No hurties. No um, aestheticies. And no 
Corbidaces. Well, I think I'm getting the idea of what these might mean. Um, yo a tu discri. Uh, no si. Oh, I understand that. Ati diosis. No jus. And numbre. No, don't go anywhere in numbre. And remember about, I can't pretend to know what these mean. Because that's like ancient religious stuff. Interesting though. No hurties. No fornikis. <laughs> uh, so, porter. Again, with the porter. And you can't tell me that is not mud flood. It just all came in like a river of mud. Can you? All these people in their fine dresses. I know. Let's put our long gown on and go out in the stinking fucking mud, shall we? So we'll drag a ton of mud and we won't be able to get these dresses off later. There'll be a ton of mud clomping behind us. That doesn't make no sense. I'm almost sure that these are like the San Francisco arrivals, these people of the 18th century with their fineries and their wigs. The wigs is to cover them up. Something going on. Radiation, I don't know. So, sorry, I can't say where the destination it is, but some fine bronze work and statues. So, if you bite your nails, this is where you'll end up. That's Venus de Milo. So, it's a bit of a cronky sculpture. Venus, there's so much going on. The marble wall in the background's better. So, I don't know who this statue is, but it's a nice work. I'm just interested in this ceiling as well. It's pointing up on the marble background. Don't know, some Phoenician's got um, his mobile phone in the one hand, taking a selfie, and a ball in the other. But definitely taking a selfie. So, some things don't change. So, some fine artwork. Angel copying a veal. It's an angel. So, that's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to get the juice. So, that's a really nice... Uh, that's all out of one stone, as far as I can see. It looks like there's a imperfection just below the belly button there. And that's all I can see, though, an imperfection-wise. And Napoleon, he's got his head up everywhere in Paris. It's full Phoenician stuff. Look at this. Was he real? Was he someone else? Well, shit's all over Paris. And these, all of these um, plaques are empty everywhere else, but you get the odd N in Paris in some of them. So, this is interesting. Before, let's have a look at this door. It's really pretty. Before and after. Before and after. Okay, so, door there, pillars there, and, oh, we gain all of that. So, all of this up to there is in this photograph below mud okay take another look and the door so this is the line here and boom mud okay half buried in the mud and boom and boom and you doubt about the mud flood and it looks like a mantelpiece it's like a mantelpiece Mantle. I wonder what that's all about. That's pretty, isn't it? Something in Russia with a beautiful coloured onion domage. So a strange, obscure a sculpture which seems to have some demonic goings on. And that is what I mean. Is that the head of the Gorgon? No. Head of something. Looks like a film alien. When it turns into a spider and crawls across the floor. You gotta be fucking kidding me at that moment. It's interesting, isn't it? all this what it means I don't know I had to say strangling a a baby um, giraffe I think that might be a giraffe you know you must be a giant if that's a giraffe got giraffe like horns on it it's like I really like you you're strangling me sort of thing going on Oh, the deer is giving the sun a little kiss. It's not the sun. Probably. They always put smiley faces on suns. This is a pretty funky um, museum. It's a museum full of knights. Check that. they got a little tiny knight there on a horse. wonder if it's like um, Night of the Museum that that comes alive at night. Or all of them. 
also a load of horses with armor on imagine them running towards you more scary than the first world war crazy what's going on with the lights as well like spikes crazy crazy armory museum oh i thought this was a fantastic build imagine walking up towards that in india yeah Not be into that's not the Indian flag. So um, I talked about this on my last post. It was the Galveston flood? It was Galveston's awful calamity, a tidal wave, on September the fifth, nineteen hundred, and the entire city had massive Italian buildings, still has, but wiped out. And this is why you'd expect it. it should have happened in San Francisco, just, just to see that high comes in. Cities, they don't stand a chance. Grab your door. The need it. the end of the depression 1932 and they put this out there so it was the jewish star with the swastika embossed over it but obviously it's nothing to do with fascism at the time it's to do with the north pole overhead view and the path of the sun and the moon and the all c and i in the middle and that same tudor rose thing going on all four leaf clover Italian Illuminati encoding. This is interesting. I did a little bit of research. I wanted to know more about him. Is uh, Ned Kelly, who's like a gentleman in Australia, doesn't fit the outlaw that they tell you about, or, or that Mick Jagger played in the movie. Um, in the late 1870s, the Australian outlaw Ned Kelly terrorizes Victoria. He has his gang, he robs banks, he took hostages, he killed anyone who got in the way. Um, most problematic, however, is his. 19 pound iron suit of armor that he made him virtually invincible unfortunately that's not what it looks like there so apparently he'd done jobs like that so you could shoot at him and the bullets would just ping off ned kelly and let and steel boots maybe maybe sounds a bit farcical just saying so there it is my book and i'll keep you all informed just keep a look at my community page there's a buzz about it and it is basically all everything that we talk about on flat of british it's like one juicy vlog after another back to back the whole vlog as this person in a in my chat uh, just mentioned he said bravo so this is me a couple of days ago and i caught another spooky sun dog no i can't remember seeing these as a kid or ever until the last year and that's the second one in a month first of all we had a beautiful blue sky then they went batshit crazy on the chemtrails and then they all lined up and then that really weird sun dog happened it got more pronounced and more like rainbowy around the edge as well so they're increasing sun dog edge maybe the sun's gonna do one yeah bye bye sun before it black Ooh. i don't know he looks like um the thorn off of um pan's labyrinth doesn't he look exactly like the thorn except the thorn hasn't got an eye he keeps an eye in his hand you could film that pants of it reminds me of this sort of world you know secret gardens what's through that guard that gate into a secret garden that takes you into another, another world it's pan pan's people nothing wrong with pan's people and another pan 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 with the grapes hairy legs Square bollocks and just a little tough, nothing weird, isn't it? Pan's labyrinth, pandemic, panic. Okay, so this is a bit of, I guess, in government propaganda. One fact, okay, raining a southern wind. So um, basically, we're farting in the direction of the French. I fart in your general direction. Oh no, the French are farting at us. Oh, very rude. Look at us doing that. Huh? Just taking the taking the wave. And why is men coming out of a whale again? Again. It freaks me out. It really does freak me out. I don't know what's going on. Okay. <laughs> Time is moving on. So a nice bit of beautiful marble and just detail is extraordinary. And oh. It's like a mini skirt. I, I wouldn't go oh or anything because I might be a do you can't tell but I tell you what that's a really nice bit of smoothage going on and uh, chiseling or whatever they did
like this. How? How? How does one doeth this? 3D printed, you know, something. Smooth and flawless. Right. I'm coming back. Time is moving on. It's getting um, to a uh, 20 to 12. That means I'll be on two and a half hours. So, uh, Matt Nika channel, if you do not know, okay, make sure to watch this little extra I did this week, okay? No going back because there's no going back. And it will be after this video, a terminal reset, which shows them spooky anomalies. And this, in my Brian and a lot of other people's, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that footage on there is a movie set and faked. And then you got to think deeper as why they were doing that and how much of what we're looking in the past, Megan Civil War and all the rest of it is bullshit. All we see is uh, Pathé newsreels of any of these events in Google one or two anyway. Um, and editing and letters, you couldn't send a letter home from the front. It would have to go through a board where it would be um, vetted. You'd love to say that to your wife and they would, you know, who would write years of letters and never get them home. So also, if you're new to Flat Earth British, we got a lot going on. So uh, Celtic Tatarian channel will be off its ban in next month. No, July, actually, I think. Um, Flat Earth British, where we have about four or five videos in the last week or so on there and interviews for you to catch up on as well, in case you're, you know, because a few of you said you was addicted to Flat Earth Britishness. Um, I've also got another video made, which I'll put up later, maybe, not tonight, I can not, um, of... Six thousand pictures with music, and it took me forever to record. Um, so all I need to do is upload that. But I was wondering where to upload it. So I thought onto my Matt and Nika's Nectar channel, I'm just sharing it out everywhere. But it's six thousand groovy images. You could just screen save them. They're really good, all of them. So I have tens of thousands of images. Just been thinking of a way to get them out there that it's not going to take all my time that I don't actually have, because otherwise I'd be not researching anymore. I'd just be doing that so anyway matthew short yeah panties a i don't know what that says sing good to see you my bread for brethren uh sort of sonia capilocious wow legend andy chung why what you do andy james manuel good to see my friend mary smith any lurkers now we got 909 of you watching it's been a really nice big evening again on flat a day now as i said got the book coming out what i would really like was thinking today is fuck me we had that lockdown last year you'd think that they think shit what if they pull our lockdown again we won't be able to do anything where are the conventions now i've spent a lot of time doing flat earth conventions okay and i thought to myself what doesn't exist is an alternative history convention now i've mentioned this before someone would fucking bash it if they were fucking get a haul um and get me on stage and a load of the other uk youtubers because that would fucking fantastic no it really would think about it get some of the big names in on on a proper tatarian convention talk about all this stuff there's nothing more mind-blowing why is that fucking happening what is what is going on out there mcfly mcfly mad pieman good to see you bad throw the cream pies at the lurkers no lurkers are fine uh don't 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 beat them up Okay, maybe they got BO or something. I don't know. Join! Don't be private. It's bad for you, Brian. I'm friendly. We're friendly. What's that, Dara? Uh, I'm from Melbourne. Good to see you, my friend. Love you. Love. It's a really nice name, that. It's original. Way old Dino sure. And Captain Rankin. Um, intentional community. Let's go. Sinjur, my brother. And Led Zeppelin. Big clues with Led Zeppelin. I'm on their covers. No doubt about it. And Zay says, yeah, where'd you get your name on, Zay? Did you just look at an Andrex bog roll cover and just not as eat? You did, didn't you? I know. <laughs> Maybe never. So uh, this person, uh, Millie John, is it Millie John, a.k.a. Joe? Hi, I see you about quite a bit. You got, um, oh, no, it's not that thumbnail. There's another one with a, an angel on it. Michael, great show, thank you. I do make an effort. Oh, I shit this one out. I had a terrible day with that trying to get an F and X, 30 foot fucking long voice, no f fucking flat day. James, good to see you. Love your work, bruv. Not New Zealand. Wow. Such a long, long way away, but not really. Neighbours. This place is big. 
Mike, uh, Michelle, good to see you. Our ladies and the guardmans named after Pan. Um, pants. Fuck yeah. Nice one. Oh, I get it. Wow, brilliant. Love it. So, I'll have a Billy. Fabulous flat day. Nice. I'm glad you enjoy yourself. Hope you did have a little tickle on them funny things that I show you. Lucky I can't see me. I'll be going red on a few. Monica, good to see you. Lovely. Hope your toothache is better, by the way. Okay. You suffer not anymore. Hmm? Oh, shit toothache. I've get my, get my um, condolences there because there's nothing worse than fucked up toothache. No doubt about it. Headyman. So that's our hangover. Now, my last video, I'll be doing a few more like that. I've got a lot of things, hardcore truths that need to be spoken about. So there's going to be a way of doing it. And keep it short, sharp, shock it. Okay, is the best way. So I have to do a few more of them because um, I, it's, it's May, it's June already. And I'm starting to like fucking get a lamb thinking, fuck me. It's like, where's the time gone? The year's going. They're going to do it again. You know, we need to, you know, get it on. You know, it's just painfully fucking slow. Daisy in Massachusetts. Good to see you. Captain Rankin, I said that. Def Leopard Bear. Good to see you. Def Leopard. Never a fan of Def Leopard. Ever. Uh, Stan Waxberg. Good to see you. Anne Bischoff. Thank you as well. Hugh Gier, Good to see you, Hugh. Painter. Uh, I wonder why they call him paintings. It's because pain is in it. Maybe when you like. You know, get all your pain out on a painting or maybe it's pain because you're just bending or doing painting like an aching I don't know. but pain's in the words isn't it pain tin it's a painting see that that's my painting it is that's what i say see mary smith manuel i said again so any um lurkers before i shoot off it's getting on for nearly 12 o'clock that would be uh maybe two and a half two an hour and three quarters long vlog and there's been a lot of content this week okay there for you to catch up on squirrel sniper pantaloons didn't think of that as well god any more pans Fucking loads aren't there pan america pandemonium uh pants people that, that just keeps bringing back the mind devils devil those are holes of babylon uh, uh. panty wins okay james is definitely we're in on that pan i just said that maggie that's telepathetic so um andy chung gave me um nts what's that is that new zealand no i don't know and 30 of them though sounds good thanks for that <laughs> thanks for that brother that was really kind need it need it um out of my brian and on my 515 says brian my brother up in hanekli well welsh Energy shots could be a reflection. I don't know what we're on about. High antiquitech, indeed. And Bruce Geisha, uh, just like I can be uh, 3D printed, there are 25 layers, which we can only do with 3R. I know, I know. It's an anomalous thing. What tech were they using, indeed? Especially with the paintings. Dab Jackshire uh, may have been alive. May have been alive. I said that. I posted that many times. My old China. Steve Richards is here, obviously. Good to see you, Flatfoot Stephen. And Panam, I said that. I said that one, did he? That's a good one, though. No. Gaining Wisdom is here. Uh, four leaf clover magnetic. Yeah, two opposing Tauruses. Yeah, exactly what I think. I, I got that actually in a book, so Holy Grail and Flat Earth. I included the happy face of a man with a four leaf clover. Because that's what it means. Two opposing Tauruses. Everything works like that in this place, you'll find. Anyway. Ooh. I noticed um, when I went to ground myself today um, in the park, there, there was a dog and he was just rolling the back, rolling around in the grass. And I thought, yeah, you're just fucking grounding yourself. They love it. Although it's cool. It feels nice on their back. But they love to, you know, roll around, don't they, in the grass. So I'm thinking, yeah, you just like we do. Just walking around, grounding yourself on the lovely grass, feeling nice. Why not? Animals do it. They know. The thing is about animals is they're like the sentient, aren't they? And they got like intrachromatic systems like the humans, but only theirs ain't affected by the paradigms. They ain't got the fact about this. So they're like, you know, existing how they should. Pretty interesting, I think. So they're lovely. I love animals. 
Uh, I look like, except when I eat for ethnic, ethnic cables. I'm not so, not so keen then. Geopolymer, maybe, Bry, maybe Lizzie's there as well, Freeze. Okay, sorry about ads off it. They're playing in the background. Okay. <laughs> Only I could ever have that. Think about it. That Deborah's here as well. Good to see semi simulators. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Can't trust anything in this place. Don't know what's what anymore. Uh, the sun dogs happen because of chemtrails. Yeah, I think so. I think so as well. Uh, Benji, bravo. Merci beaucoup. Bing. James. And also um, pantomime. Oh, that's Pam. Oh, Pam. <laughs> Pan pipes, oh yeah, obviously. Pay pipes of peace. He's annoying, isn't he? That fall, Paul, fall. Uh, pans tanks, Mullican tire. He should have exploded then. That would have been a much better video. Mullican tire, <laughs> just explode. Brilliant. All over Linda. Uh. Pan chita. Oh, good one, good one. Don't know what that is. It's Mexican, isn't it? Auto correct. Is that like autodidactic? Is that a new one? Is that your new channel? Autocorrect. <laughs> Pangea. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I forgot about that. Pan is a eunuch. Yes, he's got smooth bits like Action Man. And, ooh, Alva Billy. Might be the elevation is too high. Not sure where we're on about. Anyway, I'm going to dive off because I'm running out of steam. We've done a lot this week. It's been a really epic week on Flat Earth British. Oh, next week, I'm on the show. Okay? We're digging deeper, like I said. Okay, guys? No time to waste. Let's hit these fuckers while we can. Okay. OG Scott is here. Timeline shift is here. Tataria. Long live Tataria Gretchen. I did say that. And OG. And Chris is as well. Energy shots. Ooh, there he is. Which is Campbell. Which is auto detected channel. I can't wait forever. And we have Janine. We love you. We love you too. So make sure you stay epic, keep your vibration up. Epic amounts of not giving a fuckness is very important this time, okay? Now you've learned from the master of not giving a fuckness how to be an expert, not give a fucker. Why not? Yes? Yes, okay, you've sorted it, okay? Mac, thank you, have a good one. I'm gonna have a cup of coffee now and I need something to eat. Before I had done this, I had like fucking terrible time with having to do loads and loads of writing stuff. Always. Anyway, that's part of it. So, have fun. And I'll be back in a day or two. Happy flat day. Hope you enjoyed the commentary. Hope you enjoyed that weirdness about Chicago. That makes no sense to me anyway. I'll just spring two million people out of its butt while it's been destroyed halfway through. War, everything else. War, whatever. Fucking nutters. Yeah, so, yeah, what in tarnation exactly? There, just, just, just succinctly put it. Misty's here. Forgot there. And Rosemary's here as well, Rosemary Morley, and Maggie, and Misty, I said that. Todd is here as well. Sorry, I missed you, Todd. Love autodidactic. We all love autodidactic. He's a famous YouTuber extraordinaire. And Curious Squirrel. Ooh, Squirrel Sniper. You might have a friend. Yeah, you can get together in your squirrel club. The squirrel stuff. Collect nuts together. Ooh. Lucky per I might join the squirrel gang. So I need to change my name. Squirrel Earth British. Hmm? Yeah. Carla Red Pill, my friend. Let's talk to you again very, very soon. My Facebook truth in budget. We go on epic truth in rants and go on truth in binges. I do. We've got not nightly truth in binges. I'm a haku truther. I do truth in my relaxing time. Yeah. Red Pill and where it hurts. Okay, that's me. Kind of dummy. I didn't see you there. So anyone else, any other YouTubers, I know you all watch me anyway, even though you don't come into my chat and say hi to my friendly crowd, which would be very nice. But I know you're there. Five thumbs. Okay. It's a big truth coming. Off like a British. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Square. No problem, my brother. Anyway, thank you all. And I'm going to chuck off out now. Ooh, Talif. What's up? Uh, Red Spartan, yeah, I do sub to him. I don't watch, I don't actually watch too many videos, but I know he does good work. Um, viv vividness and Vivis Mess, oh, that's a fucking head full at the end of the day. Uh, Bushka Allen, people are free, people from birth, no shit, Sherlock. What a fucking con all that was. Everything's done by consent. Is that you, Rastafari, my brother? I didn't see you there. It is. It's Rastafari. 
who's my brother, who's a musician. Okay, he's one of the crew. We also got Alex here, Christian Castle. I was going to come to London today. I had a telephone call to go to London today, but I, I wasn't like fixed to go, basically. It would have been shit. And John is just chicken bones. What do you know about them? Don't, don't tell everyone about the chicken bones. I'm running out of museums to get banned from. Nah, there's plenty. I'll get I'll get around them all eventually. Uh, CMR Lizard, um, Age of Truth, and this is a great channel. It is. It's, it's a not just mine. It's a lot of people's. Thousands of us here. Okay, all this, all contributing information, comments, emails, and we put it all together, and then magic happens. Okay, that's also unselfishness works. Gary, thank you too. See Coop. Anyway, um, uh, Brian. Stay safe. Peace and love to you all. Fat thumbs.